So we're in Argentina and we went through hell, absolute hell in Argentina to try to winch there. Like if you're trying to film a movie and you want to go winch, do not go to Argentina. I will say that. If you want to go to Argentina and have a great time and go to cables and party and just live it, go to Argentina. On today's episode of the Grab Matters podcast, we sit down with a very special guest, Wesley Mark Jacobson. Wesley Jacobson is a professional wakeboarder that currently lives in Valdosta, Georgia at Valdosta Wake Compound. He's the mastermind behind the Space Mob crew. We talk with him about his journey through wakeboarding, discovering it in high school behind the boat and the jet ski, um, and then transitioning into getting started on the cable at college, and how his journey led him to Jibtopia, which is an iconic two-tower system, um, and then how he went over to the Philippines, met with Quinn Silvernail, and eventually landed at Valdosta Wake Compound. If you guys do like the podcast and are interested in supporting it, joining the Patreon is absolutely the best way to do so. Uh, it means a ton to me, all the Patreon members on there, so thank you guys for, for helping keep this podcast going. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Grab Matters podcast. Hope you enjoy. Waterboarding. They're talking about wakeboarding. The thing about wakeboarding, every trick is an inverse. Backside. Backside. Air railing. A new dimension. All right, we're back with another episode of the Grab Matters podcast. Today we welcome on a very special guest, <laughs> Wesley Mark Jacobson. How's it going, Wes? It's going really good. Down here in Florida, hyped to finally make this happen, link up with the milkman, and tell some stories. Absolutely. I'm uh, very excited for this one, as I'm sure a lot of the people are. Yeah. Uh, first few questions, as I think you might know. Wake pants, yes or no? So, definitely yes. And it's like, I knew you were going to ask this question. It's like, damn, like, I feel like I got to have a good answer or some shit, you know? But, I mean, definitely yes. And not all the time, I think. It's not like they're mandatory. But for me, I feel like wake pants started as, well, we were filming a lot. And then we were filming a lot in cold temps. And... The wake pants look better than a full wetsuit. Just like, I ain't trying to look like Batman out there when I'm fucking filming. I want to look good. I want to feel good, feel swaggy. And wake pants was just the answer. And they're so easy to find. You just go to a thrift store and you find some athletic pants and pop those suckers on and get to it. You're on your way. Yeah. They can be, they can be a little, I mean, they, they are annoying. I think like when you're getting out of the water and, that's why I really want to design like proper wake pants that have like uh, drain holes and stuff in them. So like make a good pair of wake pants, you yeah. know, cause we're just borrowing pants from thrift shops and then, you know, just turning them into wake pants and they work, but I mean, it's worth it. I think if you're filming, you know, if I'm not filming, like if I'm just cruising, like I don't put them on all the time, you know, cause it's like, fuck it. I'm not filming. I don't really care what I look like. And they definitely, I feel like they slow you down a little bit like on ollies and stuff like they can they can make you feel heavier you oh, know because yeah. yeah. they're they're holding water they're <laughs> catching wind they're doing a lot of that so but i mean all in all if we're filming like i'm i'm putting on wake pants all day yeah you're putting in the effort to get the clips wake it, pants is just a very small piece to make it look even better yeah exactly and it's like when we're filming, you want to look your best. It's like you want to have swaggy fits and stuff. I love watching I love watching skate edits, especially skate edits because you know you're wearing normal clothes, but like when homie's swagging in some sick stuff and just like casual, like nice outfits and stuff, like it hits different, I think. Yeah. And like, you know, riding in some ratty ass clothes, it's like I'm not really doesn't look sick. You know what I mean? <laughs> you might be doing some sick stuff, but you definitely look you look better, like the clips look better, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, look good, feel good, ride good. You know it's, that. Oh, yeah. And hold on. Okay. So I didn't know if you were going to ask me this first or later, but. Oh, boy. We're getting into it. We're getting into it. Oh, boy. So on the topic of wake pants, I have a very special gift for you. The, the, the top article of clothing is not wake pants. This feels heavy. There's something in here. Is there? I know. I know. <laughs> See, I know what's going on here. I know what's going on here. What? What could be in there? Well, well. First off, for the listeners, we got a bag, and it's got what? What? What is this? Because I'm trying to. Oh, it's a hat. It's a, it's hat. a beaner, dude. That I sewed myself from um, thrifted materials. Yep, and it's a great red beanie, right? This is red. Mm -hmm. And inside, we have a full sugar Smirnoff. <laughs> I'm gonna make that distinction because the, the full sugar is like. 
<laughs> yeah, you hit me right in the face with that thing. Which I guess yeah. I'll shout. do it right now, and then we'll do the wake pads, right? Yeah. Okay. That, I mean, that, or yeah, 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 whatever you want. You got to fill the air while I do shout this. Shout out. Uh, I got to get in my knee, right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do the whole thing. That's cool. I, I mean, it. yeah, you know. That's just how it is. You know the rules. Shout out Todd Allen for this. Is that him? Yeah, we were just talking oh, on the way God. on the way down here, and he was like, "You gotta ice him, dude." And I was like, "Oh my God, Todd! Oh my God, what a champion! What a champion!" He was just saying that he's been out of college for a long time, but it doesn't look like it with I mean, that. That's sweet, dude. That is. Oh, how kind, how, how kind of of you and Todd to just. <laughs> Dude, just you just that's so nice. You just hose that unit. That that's one of those ones you're gonna regret in the morning. I'm yeah. gonna regret that one tomorrow. Yeah. Well, well, not really, but not really, dude. Well, the hat's sick, dude. I'll put Thanks. it on after because I can yeah. put it on the. I mean, the, uh, it's kind of like that Michigan vibe. Yeah. Type. Did you see Gibby rocking this kind of? Yeah. Thing? You know what I mean? Like, and then I just, I mean, I love sewing, and I just love sewing different stuff. And then I found all these sick materials, and then I was like, fuck. Want to make something out of them, and then that just kind of happened. All right, so what a way to start a pod. Also, anybody else coming on? Don't think you're gonna get away with that because that's not gonna that's not gonna be a that's thing. That's not gonna <laughs> fly, dude. I know. I was like, I was like, damn, Todd, it's kind of brutal. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Okay, that's way worth it. Yeah. All right, so a little context too. Today we were riding at uh, oh, well, we were riding in Florida here, and it was it was chilly. It was <laughs> so cold. It was dude. borderline like. You, if it was a little bit windy or a little bit colder, like we ain't riding. No, like it kind of sucked. Yeah, it like was it, fun though. We had a lot it of fun. was fun for sure. Like yeah. we don't ride together too much, so like that was sick. But for the listeners, we got some custom Grab Matters wake pants, which I could have used today because yeah, I rock wake pants. Yeah, and that logo that is hand painted, my guy. <laughs> I was gonna say, how'd you get this? Damn. Yeah. yeah, so it's like the the screen print ink material or the screen print ink. And then I just like projected the image onto the pant and then okay. traced it out with like a Sharpie and then hand painted it. And then you just got to cook the ink with an iron and then it like bakes it, hardens it. And then you essentially have like a screen print. So same thing as screen yeah, print. Like just, it, yeah. Like, like manually. Well, I'm hoping it doesn't, you know, well, we're going to find out. Wash off in the water. I'll let you know. Damn. But yeah, right. That's hype. Thank you, dude. Yeah, you're welcome. That's huge. With the kneecaps, super like. OG snowboard vibe, like what's all? Oh, and we got, we got, that's huge. Yeah, gotta be. Able and to I hope they fit. Down. Like, I think they look like they will. I think they will. I think they'll be fine. I put them on, and they were like a little tight on me. Well, you're but like I'm. Me. Yeah, I'm a big ass dude. So, and you're kind of big too. But I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try and put these down here somewhere. So, yeah, dude, display a little. Yeah, I was hyped. It was actually because, you know, Cena's doing her pod. And then she's like, I mean, she's so sick. She's in there, like, making presents for you and shit. And I was like, damn, dude, like, I got to make this dude a present. Like, (laughs) you can't just bring him all the presents. I want to be cool. Damn. Todd hit me with the ice. Wow, what a way to start a show. I love that. Yeah, so that was from me and Todd Allen. Yeah. Shout out, Todd Allen. Shout out, Todd Allen. What's up? All right, well. That's a great start. I say we uh, Pretty, keep going. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. Something that maybe you don't do a lot. Favorite grab. What do you got? So my favorite grab is when I grab my board and walk to the dock. You're that guy. Well, honestly, I just don't grab my board. Like, I don't. And I don't know why. It just has never felt good to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I swear. It's crazy, right? Yeah. But I just, like... I just love shifties and just leaving shit behind and then catching it back up, you know? And, and of course you can do that with grabs too, but I'm just not the grab guy. I've like never grabbed my, I mean, I have grabbed my board yeah, and I like do it every once in a while. I get, well, really not recently. Well, when was the last time you grabbed your board? Like, I've, I mean, you don't hit kickers much too. That's, no, that's a huge thing. No. If you don't hit kickers, I mean. I used to do. Like, when I was at Valdosta Austin in the early days, I was doing a lot of, like, indie front blunts. Like, I'll get down on the indie, okay. fr- indie front blunt we'll grab for grind sure. Action. Yeah, I like that. But, like, grabbing in the air and... I mean, it, I think it's cool to grab in the air and tweak and stuff. Like, I'm not hating on it, but I just don't really grab my board. I just, like... I just like shifties and, obviously, like, spanks and 
playing with the water and sounds more than like grabbing and tweaking. Yeah, Cause everyone else is grabbing and tweaking. So like, I don't need to do that. Gun to your head. Yeah. Favorite grab. Yeah. So, well, the second part is like, okay, I don't grab my board. I don't really have a favorite grab, but what do I like seeing? Yeah. What do you like to see? Um, number one, number one, like, like, uh, a window tail grab sick. Like, so Windsor, you mean Windsor? Yeah, yeah, okay. James Windsor yeah, yeah. tail grab, like bring it up to your fucking neck. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's tight. Crail is always a good grab. Always cross, cross got a good crail. Cross got a good crail. Surprisingly, dude, Ralphie Slayton, homie's got a good crail. Okay. Yeah, he can yoink on that thing. Okay, which is so sick. We're talking ends of the board. You, you like seeing yeah, the ends of the for board. sure, okay. especially on like the Melter six five, where you can the tips are so flexy that you know you you yoink on on your nose and like the actual board flexes and you can like see that in the clip. It's like, yeah. that's what we want. Um, and then I really like like the whole truck driver vibe, especially on rails. Like Wes Huber was doing that. He was doing, like, yeah, he was doing like fitty fitty truck drivers, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. okay, that's sick. Um, I hate, hate like, anything through the legs and grabbed i hate. <laughs> chicky salad you're not about dude, it, dude i hate r roast beef chicken salad canadian bacon like whatever you want to call them i do not care why not don't look good i just don't think they look good okay to me in my eyes it's like i think it just looks weird i'd rather like see like a traditional grab just like yoinked out like, like on one side or the other indie mute or whatever melon yeah. kind of thing i mean i think indies are tight like when when you you know when you actually do this like you'll grab indie and like yoink it through your spin oh it's so fun sick yeah like yeah that's good good job <laughs> <laughs> see so when you're doing the between the legs i feel like a lot of people do they're like it's it's checking a box where they're like okay i'm going through the leg and i grab my board but there's no tweak at all involved. You can't really tweak it. The chicky salad, dude, you can tweak a chicken salad. Yeah. That's the one that I, I do like a chicken salad when it's tweaked real hard because you yeah. get that wrist twisted. and. I mean, but I don't know. I can, we can, Everyone's got opinions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're talking favorites on the ends. That's, yeah. the, that's your yeah, to watch. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I think. Because you can really yank those up and down. Exactly, yeah. and that's what I like to see with the grab. Okay. But for me, nah. All right. Uh, cats or dogs? Dogs. Cena, do you want to come in here for a <laughs> second? <laughs> Yo, Bill. Your husband's talking shit. All right. So Penny's going to be happy with that one. But. Yeah, cats are so evil animals, dude. Yeah. You know, you know when you, like, if you die with your animal, like, a dog will, like, just, like, nestle beside you for, like, ever. And, yeah. a, and a cat will start eating your face. Didn't know that. It will, it will start eating your head. That's a tough pill to swallow for cat owners. Die. Yeah. Uh, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, dude. That's insane. I don't know. I hate cats, for sure. Except okay. for, like, copycats. Yeah. They're pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> Good save. All right. Let's let's uh, let's jump into the early days. Uh, young WMJ. WMJ. Where'd you grow up? New Egypt, New Jersey. Okay. Or first eight years and it was pretty tight just like small town vibes in the middle of jersey and we were riding bikes a lot bmxing along with some skateboarding and my brothers were like racing bmx and stuff i was kind of too small um, my dad is into dad and brothers are always into like motocross and stuff and yeah and then moved down south when oh we actually had like a bmx track in our backyard and stuff okay not like a super legit one homemade but, style yeah yeah my dad got some dirt and then we shaped you know a couple jumps and some berms and stuff so that was super sick so definitely been like always active but um you know i was riding bikes and stuff but i was definitely i was kind of the oddball out from my brothers like they were kind of more the gnarly dudes like really racing and jumping and doing tricks and shit. And I was more like the more so like the little artsy dude, you know, I've always been into art and drawing and stuff and creating and didn't really know what that meant or whatever back then. But yeah, 
but still always into sports and stuff. And then we moved to Spartanburg, South Carolina when I was nine. And then we, should, we kept up with the bikes. But then it was like, I mean, everything. Me and my brothers, like, we did everything. Like, we were rollerblading. We were mountain boarding. We went down a, a hole of mountain boarding for a while. This shit was sick. It was Johnny Cabahala back on board kind dude, of stuff right was, there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was tight, too, dude. I dig mountain boarding and skateboarding and, and dirt bikes and, fuck, anything we can get our hands on, really. I built a mini ramp in my backyard when I was a little bit older. My brother, uh, Doug, would go to construction sites, and he would steal the wood and then sell it to me at a discounted rate. <laughs> <laughs> Which it was still pretty sick though. It was like five bucks a sheet of plywood. Like, okay. So I built built my mini ramp, and then just always been jibbing and jiving on little things like that. I always had rails in the parking. Um, yeah. No traditional sports though. Growing up, some b ball. Really? Yeah. Okay. I like. I always loved basketball and wanted to. I definitely wanted to make the team and stuff, but like never, just never made the team really. I don't know why. What years is this? You're, you're balling. I remember trying to make the team in like ninth grade. And I like really was trying to make the team, you know? Yeah. Just didn't make the team. Yeah, I was the only kid cut from uh, my eighth grade basketball team. So we had an A team and a B team. It hurts, dude. I was the only kid cut. It hurts, dude. <laughs> it yeah, and it's bad. like, why Why can't you keep me on the team, dude? It <laughs> yeah. hurts for sure. You got to cut one kid, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's here? fucked up. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's get into. I mean, you're, you're skateboarding, mountain boarding. You're standing going, sideways. Going a to bit. The, yeah, going to skate parks a lot, getting dropped off with my homies and stuff. Like definitely that vibe. Um, trying to snowboard as much as possible, but the mountains are like two and a half hours away, and it just I don't know. It just didn't happen a lot. It happened more when I was in high school and I had homies that then when we started driving. And we would take trips, like, as much as we could in the winter. But um, snowboarding was always, like, I really wanted to snowboard. and But I just couldn't as much as I wanted to. Like, And I had, like, snow skates and stuff. Whenever, if it got below freezing at my house, my whole back porch, I would water it down, and it would freeze, and I would put up rails, like, off of the drop of the porch, and, like, I'm fucking shredding, dude. <laughs> Like, I really, like, I love, I was always attracted to the snow sports and snowboarding. And, you know, I was really never that good at it or anything. I mean, I could, you know, I'm doing my thing or whatever, but I just couldn't do it enough to really get good. Yeah. And, I mean, and this whole time, like, growing up in school and stuff, I'm always into art, always in art classes, always drawing, always creating something, building shit at the house, like, whatever I could get my hands into, definitely always creating. And it was always a dream of mine to do snowboard graphics. Like, that was, like, my end all, like... So you'd see boards at a shop or whatever online and be like, oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, for sure. I was like, if I could... I know, I, like... I mean, I'm a, I'm a realist. I was like, I'm not going to be a pro snowboarder, you know? But if I could do graphics for them, for the pros, then that would be so sick, yeah. you know? And then... That shit's funny because then I found wakeboarding and I was like, this shit's way easier than snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> so what age is that? I mean, you, you remember what, what that first experience was? When I found wakeboarding? Yeah. Um, my parents got a lake house when we were in high school. And then we would take trips down there and it was me and the homies just like trying to figure it out. Had no one to tell us what we were doing. Like my, my first experience wakeboarding was like so bad. Like, like so bad, just like couldn't even, couldn't get up, you know, like to save my life. Cause it's like, I'm just like leaning back and everyone's kind of like, when you're trying to get up behind a boat, people say lean back a lot. You don't want to lean back. I feel like that's the number one you, piece of advice from someone who has no idea. What you want to lean forward to get up behind a boat. Because you're already on your back. How you're far are you going to lean back? You're on your back, dude. <laughs> yeah. So they're telling me, like, lean back. And it's like, all right, I'm leaning back. But then you just got this huge wall of water in front of you and nothing's fucking happening, you know? And then you just pop the handle because the boat's going faster and faster. It's actually like when we. So it's funny about 
like when we started really wakeboarding, we would go to this cove that was next to the cove we lived in because we were in high school and shit. So we would go there and like smoke blunts and shit while we were like frolicking around. We had a jet ski. So we'd like load up the ski with the homies. We'd take like multiple runs, like drop a couple homies off, go get the other homies. We'd have like six homies. And we're just like got like skimboards and wake skates and wakeboards. And we're like trying to figure this out. Like we're figuring this out. I mean, we're going to be stoned as fuck while we do it, but we're going to figure it out, you know? And we actually like, the way we figured it out, because, like, no one could get up from the water. So we would, like, lay pine straw and, like, make a runway from the shore. Dry start. Yeah. Yeah. I How, mean, it makes sense. Yeah. And so, yeah, we were standing up, and we could just slide into the water, and then we could cruise around and do our thing. And then when we fall, you know, you just get picked up by the ski, go back to the start. Head back to the pine straw. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So funny, right? Dry starts. Yeah. Okay. So I was, you're. I was made for this. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in high school, just farting around. It sounds like in the water. I mean, nothing. You're not taking Dude, wakeboarding. Any definitely seriously. nothing crazy. Okay. And like, and by the time I figured out like how to get up and stuff, like I was so trash behind the boat, like. I mean, I don't even grab my board, dude. <laughs> well, we know that. Yeah, man. like imagine that. What do you do behind the boat? <laughs> And it was really just like, I mean, but I liked it and I wanted to get better. Yeah, the feeling of being on the water was still a lot of fun. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and just frolicking around with your homies and yeah. and learning. You know, that's sick. We do like high speed whips with the skimboard and just let go and just see how Always far fun. you, dude. <laughs> like the sickest. How is that not a sport? <laughs> uh, what, kind it, of, what kind of boat are we talking for you? Um, we eventually got like a sea ray yeah. and put a tower on it. Okay. And my parents have always been like pretty damn supportive of like, I mean, they would like buy me skateboards and blades and they let me build this illegal mini ramp in our backyard from all the stolen wood and buy mountain boards and BMX and motocross. And like, if we wanted it, like they would find a way to make it happen. Yeah. We weren't poor. We weren't rich. We we're well. You didn't have a we're just, brand new wakeboard boat. Yeah, you didn't hell have a, no. Yeah, we we're just chilling in the middle, dude. Yeah. And then yeah, like so, I'm like finishing up high school, and then I really love wakeboarding, but I don't really know what it is to me yet, you know, or anything. And and then I find out like so I'm looking at colleges, and then. College of Charleston pops up, and then I hear that they have a wakeboard club at College of Charleston. And that was pretty much my deciding factor for going to College of Charleston. And, but then I didn't find the wakeboard club until my sophomore year because we were just like partying and shit. I don't know. I mean, when you, when you're a freshman, dude, you just, fast. you just get dropped off and it like, it's a fucking whirlwind, dude. You don't know what you're doing. You're just partying and shit. And, but then I found the wakeboard club sophomore year, and it's pretty sick. Place called Trophy Lakes is a ski school, pretty much. But then they had some homies out there who were wakeboarders, and on on they had a ski lake, and then they had the wakeboard lake, which you could do traditional wakeboard sets on. But it was just a ski boat, so like they didn't. I mean, we I guess we would put like a little weight in it, but they wouldn't let you weight it down. Like it was not a. It, you couldn't really do shit behind this boat. Yeah. So they just started building rails along the shore. So like, and then once I found that and like these homies are hitting rails on a wakeboard, that's when shit really started to click. And I was like the most hyped I've ever been on wakeboarding 100%. And then it was like, long story short, like me and my homies, I, we get, we got a squad into it. Like we run it up for a year or two. And then like me and my homies end up running the club. We run the club from like 25 members to like 150 members. By the Jeez. end of it, we're taking trips to Florida, hitting all these cables. Like we are fucking vibing, dude. It was so tight. Like those were sick years. And then, and then trophy lakes have been talking about getting these cables from cable bond. And and then that finally happened. I don't know exactly when. Probably like my junior or senior year. 
we got the cables and we had three system twos. They're not system twos, but they're called cable models. Yeah. But three Two system twos down these fingers. And we had like beginner, intermediate, and then we had our playground, which is like a long ass 800 foot run. Me and the homies built features for it. And it was like, and that's like what, what my first edit is from. Like, um, what is it? I think it's just Wesley Jacobson at Trophy Lakes yeah. or something. It was my first edit that got on Alliance and like got mad hate and shit and it was like we're doing it dude yeah it was, what, what, what were the comments i mean what was the feedback i think the one comment that i remember was like uh boner legs and shitty style <laughs> <laughs> can't help that i'm tall bro but i was like dude i don't give a fuck i'm hyped on that dude like like no press is bad press dude i'm getting i'm getting hits on this video yeah. like homies are pissed that's good you know what i mean and it's like and i think and that was the first edit that i had my skinny stance and i was rocking the skinny stance and repping it pretty hard and feeling good on that shit yeah and the features are tight we had that creeper that we built the picnic table like that thing was so much fun and yeah but the uh so funny thing about the the stance i was me and the homies like when we were all coming up it was like you know ducked out and all the way out oh, yeah. because like that's what you see you know that's what the shred town homies rep and that's what snowboarders are repping at the time so we were all about that my uh one of the homies that was staying at trophy lakes his name is tobias vara he was a you don't know him he's not like a wakeboarder or anything but he actually was a wakeboarder but he was a professional skier but he was like a slalom skier okay. or three Water event skier. skier. Gotcha. So he was at Trophy Lakes from Norway to train. But then we just became like solid buds. So we were chilling all the time. And he would just wakeboard with me all the time. And he was fucking sick. And he would always tell me, dude, he's like, you got to get rid of that wide stance. You got to tighten that shit up. Really? Yes, dude. He was on that wave. Like, it was crazy. It's crazy to think back. And I was always kind of like, Nah, dude. Like, because it's coming from some water ski guy, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, not really. I didn't give a. I didn't. Not, care. not the water. Ski, I didn't like, care about that. You're not wakeboarding. Like, it was just nah because shred town. Ah, you know what okay. I mean? Like the homies I look up yeah. to for real. Like the pros that I look up to. I was like, you're tripping. You know, like you're not in the scene, bro. Like these guys would be doing it. If yeah, it was the like thing, if man. it was legit. Like these guys would be doing it, and they're not. But then looking back on, it, I was like, fuck. I should have. I should have made the change way earlier yeah i mean you were still early to the game so yeah got that i mean that makes sense from a water skier though his feet are next to each other he's like hey man and he was the silkiest rider too like and like looking back on it, i was like i can't believe i didn't see the sauce immediately and been like damn you're so right because he was doing like sick like fitty like front ones into like the wall of this feature that like you don't ride like it's not it's not a wall that you ride. It's just it's like a wood wall or something. It, it, it's a wood wall, yeah, yeah. exactly what it is. And he's like fitty, like stanky front one, like slurping down it, you know. And it's like I should have seen it earlier. Yeah. But I was, you know, I was just like I was on my wave, you know, like being hyped on wakeboarding. And it's like, well, all these other dudes are slammed out. So guess what? It's where I'm at. I'm, it's where I'm at. Okay, so you you got your your stance narrowed up. You're yeah. basically probably around graduating college at this point because yeah. this is the end of your, yeah they got the cables there. So first off, what's your what was your degree in? What did you get a degree in? Um, hospitality management. I actually went to school to be a doctor because <laughs> well I've always been good at school like and I've always loved school. I've always gotten good grades like I. All my friends did not. All my friends were usually shitheads. But, like, I just, I always liked school. Like, it didn't bother me to do the work. And I liked getting good grades, too. Like, it was cool. Like, felt good. And especially, like, and I was in, like, after school programs for, like, the advanced math kids and shit. You know, like, algebra. And, like, yeah, yeah. super nerd shit. But I loved it. Like, because I loved those kids and I loved my scuddy friends too. And it was like, it was so sick to be friends with all of them. And I remember like, cause you always like, I loved the surprise of teachers and stuff when it's like, cause I act how I act. Like, I don't care, but like, I'm gonna do my shit too. 
And I remember I was always in like advanced like math classes and stuff and always like AP, like yeah. calc or math or whatever it is. And like, I remember this one time, I think it was pretty early on. I think it was like seventh or eighth grade. And it was like super hard test or whatever. And you got all the nerds in there. And I got like the highest mark in the class on the test. And everyone's just kind of like. Who is this guy? They're like, Wes? They're like, Wes got the best grade? And it's like, I love that feeling. So, yeah. And, you know, carried that. Probably a little bit less. I mean, I did my thing in college. But I wasn't like 4.0, like perfect dude. Because I was partying and having fun too. Yeah. But like never failed a class or anything, you know, graduated four years, like did, did my shit and got out of there. Um, which I'm hyped on. Cause it's like, especially, especially when you're paying for the school, for the schooling, it's like, you, you're going to pay 120 grand to go to college and then just fuck it up. Yeah. Like, nah, dog. Like, you could have, you could spend 120 grand to party and yeah, make it go a lot just, further. Yeah. Just don't go to college then. If you're going to pay the piper, dude, do your shit. Cause and I was, dude, I was always blown away in college. College was, like, way easier than high school. Hundred, Yeah. It definitely. was, they, like, set it up for everyone to pass. And it's, like, as long as you semi-do your stuff. They're taking your passing. money, dude. They want you to pass. But I will say, so when I was, when I was on the bio route, because my dad, my dad wanted me to be a doctor because he knew I was smart enough to do the schooling, and, and then you make good money, you know what I mean, once you're done. Yeah. And I was like, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I was just like, okay, we'll do that. I'll be a doctor. But then about halfway through my schooling, yeah, because I say college was easy. But halfway through my schooling, the classes started getting a lot harder because, you know, I'm on the bio route. And it's like, that's not the easy route. You know what I mean? And then schooling got harder. And I had, but this is right when I was getting super into weight. So then it's like I had to make a choice. Well, I can't wakeboard as much as I want to because I got to study all the fucking time. Yeah. And then and then I was just kind of like, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to do what I want. And so I just changed my degree to hospitality management, which is basically a business degree. Like, so easy. <laughs> like, you don't have to do shit to yeah. get a business degree. So then I just did that. And and I had a, a minor in studio art also. I was in art classes. Okay. I mean, I've been in art classes my entire life. Like. Art's always been a huge part of my life. And then, yeah. And so then I graduated with that and moved out to Trophy Lakes to, like, manage their cable park. And I lived out there and just, yeah, ran it up for a couple of years, dude, and just just wakeboarded as much as I could. Because we had, we had the, we had this, it was so sick, too. Like, this setup we had was so dope. And, and um yeah i'll throw some clips into that trophy yeah what's his name sam mm, sam boom, sam adams sam adams at cable bond he was like experimenting with different materials that you could use as a running cable he set us up with a material called sinro which is which is a super fibrous synthetic rope that has like an incredible tensile strength so which means it's like just incredibly strong, but incredibly light. You could pick up the whole spool just with like your hands, just like shloop, floats on top of the water. Like, and so it's not indestructible as a running cable, but it would last for about eight months. And so we had this running cable that was made of this Sinro and it weighed virtually nothing, but it was, and it was like the tensile strength was so strong. You could tighten the fuck out of it so it, it had no deflection in it it was like bing, and like you would pull against it but since it had no swing weight it would not even sway back if you pulled it out of center it just goes right back to center yeah. so it was like the smoothest 2.0 you've ever fucking ridden dude and it was like butter it was crazy but like after a while it had like a UV, UV resistant coating on it or whatever, but after a while it turned into a cotton ball and break. But I mean, even when it broke, it wasn't gnarly either. It just popped. Well, it's so light. That it I mean, just popped and just like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the carrier hits the water in front of you, but like, and I think we went through like two or three rounds of that Sinro, but like, damn dude, those were the days. And that it's like crazy that I haven't seen that material resurface because like, if you're throwing pop-up events, for wakeboarding, yeah. dude, 
you should be running Sinro. If you're running something in the city, like Wake the City Milano or anything like that, like, it's crazy they don't have this. And, like, because if you're not running it year-round, if you pull it out of a container for a two, two or three-day event, it'll last, yeah, you'll have, you'll have one rope for five years. Yeah. And then you just replace it. Crazy. It's sick. I'm Take note. You. I mean, that it's, might be, yeah, it's something to explore. It, I mean, it's the best 2.0 I've ever ridden. Have you ridden a Little Bro, Rick's and Little Bro? Yeah, I've ridden that, Bob's. That's got the counterweight, so mm-hmm. that's got to be at least similar very sick also yeah that's the yeah very sick also but i mean the the cable weighs so much you're you're always going to have swing weight yeah this had no swing weight. interesting i had no idea that right that was, isn't that, that crazy with that there so good really so good. yeah all right so when do you talk start talking with slingshot because you're riding a slingshot in these videos right i mean from yeah pretty early on yeah okay um i switched to aronix for a couple boards um so I always picked slingshot because they just looked the best. They, they were just flat on the bottom and thin and flexy, you know, even before it was like, I knew who shred town was. I just picked a, a slingshot out of the shop and that was what I was riding. And then, um, Ronix came through with their 50 gallons of freedom tour. I met like Eric Ruck and PB and, Brett Hargrave, RIP. But <clears throat> yeah, they came through and then we were jibbing and jiving and they were like pretty hyped and wanted to, they flowed me a couple boards. So I repped them for a little while, but then that just fizzled out. So then I just went back to slingshot. And that, I'm not exactly sure. Well, I graduated in 2012 and I went to the Philippines in 2014. The Philippines was the first flight that slingshot paid for me. So I was this met- before or after Gyptopia? Before. Okay. So then keep going. Before. Yeah. So it had to have been, I probably started talking to them in like 2012. And what's that? What do you, what's that? You reach out to info at slingshotsports.com. I mean, what, what are you doing? Dude. I mean, guerrilla marketing. I'm talking to everyone. Like I'm pushing P out there. I'm trying to get sponsored. Like just like any kind of kid would, you know, like, I mean, I, yeah, um, I'm 23 or 22, 23, but I'm a Grom, you know, like I'm, I'm a grown up Grom at that point. Like I just want to be sponsored. They'd be sick as fuck. You know, it's always been my dream. And my, my homie that I met through wakeboarding in Charleston, Davey Blair, he was a professional kiteboarder at the time. And we clicked up hard. Like we were shredding all the time. And he was, he, well, not even kind of, he was my wake dad because he, he could shred the cable because he's a kiteboard. He is insane. Handle a board control. Yeah. He can do all the flips and he's hitting rails and stuff. And he kind of coached me on how to get sponsored pretty much. Well, he just gave me some insight. You know, he gave me some tools. And he basically said, like, you you don't want to annoy the shit out of these brands, but you do want to let you, you want to make them aware of you enough of like you're not asking for things but you're just sending you know you're sending clips you're sending hype you're sending this hey i'm part of this i was you know i'm running this wakeboard club we need wakeboards for a trip or anything like that just you know just making them aware of who you are and then he always said like okay so you just send enough emails to make them aware of who you are and if you're killing it then they'll take notice you know what i mean and then if they're having a meeting one day and it comes up that they need new, new borders, you know, they want to sign new people, then that one guy who you've been bugging the shit out of via email might pipe up and say, hey, I got this guy who's been hitting me up for two years, you know, maybe let's try him out. So yeah. I think it was a little bit of that and probably right place, right time of, because Slingshot did some tours through there also, like just coming through Trophy Lakes and bringing gear and test gear and stuff and. I mean, I've, I mean, that's how I met like Ollie Derome and Jeff House for the first time and stuff, and oh, yeah. and McKee as well, and and me and McKee, me and McKee just kind of linked up, like we we're just kind of homies, because it's not like, I mean, he's not that much older than me either, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, so then McKee hooked up the first flight to the Phillies, and that's when I left the country on a wakeboard trip. And, you know, I made 
I made my first edit already. I knew how to film. I knew how to edit. And all right, so you're going to CWC. Why CWC? Why? Because that's where you go. That's where you did go. I don't know if you go there anymore. That's the place to be, though. It yeah. was. Yeah. It absolutely was. That's where all the media was coming from, and all the sick writers were going there, and they were making video parts. So it's like, <laughs> we're going there, and we're making a video part. And me, Quinn, and Oliver Bremlin, dude, made Dose to Buy. So I was gonna, okay. So I was gonna ask, who who are you riding out there with? Quinn and Oliver Bremlin, dude. And that's right. the first time I really like went on a trip with Quinn. I had met Quinn at like some underground competitions. <sighs> I don't even know what they're called. Maybe it's like no, I don't know. Like Chris Hoff's place in North Carolina, just like grassroots, like Steez contests and yeah. shit. Yeah. I mean, I remember the first time I saw Quinn, dude. He's, like, the most intimidating dude you've ever seen in your life. He's, like, at the contest. I'm, like, a kook just, like, trying to be there and, and show off my skills. And then Quinn's, like, already, like, on Slingshot and shit. And he's, like, sponsored. And he's got, like, his boom headphones. And, you know, he's all, like, ginger beard. Like, he's got a gnarly face. You know what I mean? Like, homie's intimidating. And I, like, see him for the first time. And he's just, like... He's just like headphones on, like getting ready to go shred for the contest. And I just remember being so intimidated. I don't even think we, I don't even know if we spoke much at that contest, but then we just linked up after pretty much and planned this trip to the Philippines. And that's when we all just like became like best friends, you know, and Ollie B like, fuck, that dude's the sickest. So what does Dosi Dubai mean? Um, How'd you come up with it? It was something like... A waiter was waiting on us and they didn't have something in the kitchen and because they all have like broken English and he was trying to translate that to us and like or I th it might have been like check please or like trying to get the check it was something <laughs> like that it was like saying a small phrase and the dude had no idea what we were talking about and I think he was like oh don't say goodbye and we're like yeah don't say goodbye and then it just like became a thing that like i th i think it was asking for the check and it was like we'd always be hollering like don't say goodbye don't say goodbye and they just yeah i don't know what it means at all it's just like it was just you know just that natural shit it was just like a funny joke that just happened the second you hear it you're like that's the that just yeah, happened out of nothing yeah. you know and then we were like yeah it was just funny to us and we were chanting it for a while while we were out there and it was sick. Philippines was sick. All right, so you're out there with Quinn and Ollie. And Ollie B, dude. You, you're talking to Quinn at all, because this is right at the time he's starting to think about, or maybe even making moves about He's BWC, making moves. Right? Oh, so yeah, so I had met Quinn before because I would come down to some of his uh, homegrown contests at his 2.0 okay. in the front of the property. Yeah. I went to some of those before. But when you're down there in the Phillies... He had you heard about full size when you were yeah. at those two towers? Okay, oh, so yeah. it was something that was already. But it's in. all like it's all like just wait. There's Tight. a lot of people who are like, yeah, just wait. I'm not saying that this was what Kuhn was saying, but there's a lot of people who are like, oh, there's a full size coming here. Oh, just wait for the full size just here. Just wait. Just wait. It's gonna be the sickest. Yeah. Just wait, and no one would fucking believe him. And I feel like that was very frustrating for Quinn. And even I was skeptical. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. But so you're in CWC though, and are you are you guys talking a little bit more about VWC and what's the next kind of steps for him? And yeah, for okay. sure. But it wasn't it wasn't a plan that like um, go in there or anything. It didn't involve you necessarily. It didn't it involve just, me at all. Okay. Definitely not. It was just like I'm building a park, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, let me know, dude. I'm coming through <laughs> yeah. for sure. You know, like I'll be there. I didn't know I was gonna live there, but all right, you're at CWC." You, you film an edit there. This is, is this one of your, you know, first longer projects, would you say? Yeah. A hundred percent. It was, yeah. And that's what, that's all we wanted to do when we were going out there. I was like, let's just film as much as possible and I'm going to put it together and just see what happens. Good reaction to it? I don't know. I think. I mean, did this go on Alliance? Did this go, I mean, I mean, Vimeo probably for sure, but. Vimeo for sure. I don't know if it went on Alliance, but people remember it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's on your sheet of paper. I so. watched it back, dude. It was, so, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> yeah. I'm super hyped on it. The vibe is tight, dude. And all like the, 
the bullshit, the antics and motorcycling around. And it just makes, yeah, it's got some good clips in there too. Nothing like insane, but like good vibe. Quinn's got some nice foot plants in there. Like, yeah, he do. Don't he? Yeah. yeah. No, nah, it was tight. Like, yeah, we're just being, being grown kids, you know, just doing our thing. Yeah. Just some no, to some no bucket laps around CWC. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you come back from CWC and what's your plan? Cause you, how long do you spend there? Probably, I don't know, a month, maybe. I don't know how long you spent there, but a month. month. Okay. So you spent a month there shredding a lot, get the edit. You come back. What's your, what's your plan? I can't remember if I got fired from trophy lakes before I went to the Philippines or after, but that definitely shook things up for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got fired from trophy lakes for sure. But like, I just, it was always butting heads with them. Cause like, they were skiers who opened a wakeboard park and we're wakeboarders boarders and skiers are different dude oh yeah they're fucking different like so we just never got along and they're always bitching about insurance and the features that i'm building and i'm trying to film projects and i'm putting like gates and like core x's and random shit on the features and then we're like trying to get my homies out there standing on the features to film and like we're doing all the sketchy shit and they're just never into it so like always battling it but i was like so stubborn it's like i'm doing it so when they're gone i'm doing it then they like roll up on us and just be like flipping out so that came to a head at some point and yeah ended with termination of wesley mark jacobson yeah there was there was another incident that was the cherry on top I mean, I guess we're going to talk about it. Yeah, let's hear it. It was really bad. Really bad. Okay. Homie was okay. Long story short, hopefully, I hate talking about this. It's just, like, really gnarly. But uh, I ran my homie over with a full-size John Deere tractor. While we were building a setup for a wakeboard event, he was riding on the tractor I was driving. I got homie on step side one, homie on step side two. We're going to the back of the property to get blue barrels to float this thing we just built or whatever. We hit a bump. Homie slips off. Willis, oxen, best dude ever. Slips off. Feet hit the ground. Gets sucked under the back tire. Run him over end to end. And he's like, he's in bad shape on the ground. Like, it was the... By far the scariest moment of my life. Like, yeah. I just thought I killed my friend, one hundred percent. And I like really don't like talking about it. So it was so fucked up, right? So I don't even want to like. Homie's fine now. He's a, he's a school teacher and still shreds. But he was like my he was one of, he was one of the crew, dude. He was, that was Willie man. Like he was he was the homie. You know what I'm saying? Beloved by everyone. And so he was in the hospital. It was bad. He broke a bunch of um face bones and i don't know wrist and a lot yeah. but he was fine okay eventually yeah but it wasn't like he, he wasn't it wasn't like brain damage and stuff okay so he was okay and then and then trophy lakes tried to sue me they tried to they tried to throw me under the bus and and they tried to sue me and they were saying that I didn't I didn't work for Trophy Lakes at the time of the accident. I wasn't performing duties that I would normally do on a normal day and like they they like threw me under the bus, dude. So bad. But I mean it kind of makes sense cuz we don't have the best relationship anyway. Like I'm the wakeboard dude who's always trying to push the limits of what I can do on this thing and so we definitely didn't have a healthy relationship. But then, yeah, they tried to throw me under the bus. So, and then I got, I got a sick ass lawyer who just, who crushed him. Because you were working there at the time, dude. Technically, I was working my ass off. You were going to get the blue, dude. I was working. Me and the homies are working our ass off to promote this, Uh, dude. We threw sick events out there. Yeah, wake and flake, like oh yeah, wakeboard and snowboard contest. Quint talked about that. Mm -hmm. That's how I met Quint. Like, dude, we killed it for them. Like, we put that place on the fucking map. You're putting butts in seats, dude. Dude, one hundred percent, dude. I went to war for that place, and then this accident happened. Obviously, it's an accident, 
I ain't trying to run my homies over, Brett. It like, could have been him driving you what, on the side. Dude, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, like, that was bad, and I was mad. And so, dude, I got a family lawyer, sick ass lawyer, and dude, he went, he went to, he went to bat for me, and we crushed him, obviously, because I was not at fault. You know what I mean? Like, it was crazy. And it's like, man, I'm driving that tractor. I drive that tractor all the time, and. Like, where my homie was standing that fell off the tractor, my first time I rode on that tractor, my boss is driving, guess where I'm standing? So this is a usual thing. You know what I'm this saying? This is happening. It's this is like, how you're getting around the property. This is how it is at a lot of and, places. And my lawyer started asking me questions like that and shit, and I was like, oof. I was like, we're about to smoke them, dude. Yeah. Asking me if I've ever seen the, the, instru- or the owner's manual for the John Deere, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, definitely not. And he's like, and I'm like, oh, shit, like, we about to smoke these fools. And we did, you know? And and then the owner of the property will just hate me forever. Like, it's bad. And I'll still, I, like, try to show up, like, years later because they have a sick disc golf course at that place. That's where I started to play disc golf. Okay. Sick disc golf uh, course around the cable park. So I played a lot of disc golf, too. And it's a sick course. I still miss it. Still wish I could go play it, <laughs> but I can't. And he, like threaten to call the police as soon as I step on the property. But, yeah. So that's that story. So then I'm out of Trophy Lakes. Yeah. I'm done. Um, so what's next? Whether it's before or after CWC, around that time frame, what's your – what are you doing? Jibtopia, right? That's what – I mean, I think that's that time frame, right? After CWC, defo. I'm assuming that's spring-ish, summertime. Yeah, not nah, defo, Jibtopia. Yeah. I load I, I loaded up the truck. I had I had this sick Chevy SS, dude. Thing was a beast. Oh yeah. So sick, dude. And uh yeah, loaded up that unit, hit up the homies at um Jibtopia, Clark and Alex and uh Andy. And they'd already like I was kinda like, you know, getting on the map at that point. So they knew who I was and know that, you know, I'm passionate about wakeboarding and everything. So they were hyped and Yeah. So you Just move out there, loaded up everything, and moved up there, and was there for two years, right? Yeah. How two much summers. fun? How much fun was it hitting that bus? <sighs> so sick. Because that looks like a lot of fun. My parents were there that day. It was a special day. It was cool. It was. It was so special too, because you know we lived there and we rode there every fucking day, but you don't hit the bus. The bus isn't set up. You can't hit the bus. It's just there. It's like a fucking tease, dude. They never moved the kicker over to the bus. And then I don't know what it was. It was just homies were there and it was a good film day or something. And then it was just having like, we're going to hit the bus tomorrow or whatever. And it was like the sickest, dude. Never forget. I did like back 50 front three. Oh, that. yeah. I'll put that clip in. I I have that clip in my head. That so shit felt that so tight, dude. And just hitting the bus that they hit in the debut. You know what I'm saying? I was like, what? <laughs> I'm Kevin Henshaw right now, bro. Like, I just hit this bus. Like, I've never felt more pro in my life. I was like, I just did back fitting front three off that shit. No early handle pass. Like, like fell out of the sky and flat that shit and oh, yeah. stomped it, you know? That was great. So, you're, you're there. You're shredding for two years. And homies are coming, dude. Like, oh, yeah. Ollie Bremlin. Spots popping. James Windsor. Blake Bishop. Zeb came through. Um, like... All the homies. And that's when I was like, I was filming with Graham Burris for the first time ever and like getting drone clips with him. And that's when I was like submitting like Jamboree clips and stuff. I remember I did cab three switch fitty down the handrail for the first time ever. Graham Burris just filmed it. It was money too. Like it was good. And I was like, dude, those, those were sick times. And just partying. I mean, Ollie Bremlin was there. Ollie's like, dude. That's my boy. I miss him so much. Me and Ollie got into some shit up there at Jibtopia, dude. Oh, my God. Because what's that bar called that was there? I forgot what Dylan Dylan told me. It's just a number. It's a number. 49 or something. Nah, nah. It's a three-digit number. It's like like three. Oh, I don't even know. I could say a number, but it'd be wrong. It's like bar some three numbers. Uh, Yeah. I don't know. 119, maybe. Okay. It's the county road or whatever, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, whatever oh, yeah. that. Yeah, me and Ollie, we, we definitely got into some shit. We'd just get, like, wasted. I remember one time Ollie, like, was getting in fights with dudes and stuff. And because it was, like, it was a cowboy bar, you know? Like, we did not fit in at this bar. 
But like all these girls would like be loving on us. You know what I mean? Is it different guys? They're not the cowboys. They're the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ollie be getting into fights and stuff, dude. Man, this one clip that uh, went missing when Ian was up there, we we're filming for some Steez thing, bro. I'm on the dance floor, and I'm like dancing with this big bootylicious black woman and and then like and we're like i'm just having fun because i don't give a shit you know like i love that kind of stuff like just just having fun letting you had drink. a couple of drinks dude we're just dude, having a good time yeah it was so sick and then ian comes through with the camera and then i'm like oh shit the camera's on me i'm like i'm about to make out with this girl and like dude we start making out and it gets like heavy dude and then i don't know what happened to that clip but god i wish we had it <laughs> that shit was crazy but yeah like a good story um me and ollie got hammered up at that bar i think it is 119 and then we get we get in my truck and it's like chevy ss 350 horsepower all-wheel drive and we tear up Jibtopia. Like we just do donuts all over the place and just ripping like super reckless shit. We're just young and just like, dude, we're just going, you know? And just so dude, we fucked this place up and we're like doing donuts and like this truck rips, dude. And it's all wheel drive. It just goes. And we're like going, going, going. We're like drifting, you know, and doing all this stuff, tearing up the grass. We go like down in this gully and I'm like going sideways and we're like going towards some trees, right? And we're just sliding towards these trees and it's like, no, dude. And then we like hit a root and just like, and just like, and the tree's like right here out of the window. And me and Ollie just look at each other because we didn't hit it, you know what I mean? Somehow. We just look at each other. We're like, yeah! And I just mash the motor and just keep on going. And then like, dude. The homies were not hyped at Jibtopia. Like I had to, I had to push the little uh, grass seed thing around a couple days, you know, water it and get the grass going again. Yeah, it's fair enough. I mean, worth it, dude. <laughs> and you know, Clark's forgiving me for sure. That, Absolutely, man. That was a good. One. So you're there for two years. This is post college. What? Do you, how are you supporting yourself? What are you doing? What's the, I mean, what's the financial situation look like? Are you getting some money from? So I think I'm still draining. Um, I was in a really bad car accident when I was 16 on my 16th birthday, I believe. And my brother was driving. <sighs> Damn, that was bad. So I guess I got it, dude. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to go into it, but it's, I mean. But it's part it's of. context. It's, it, yeah. It, yeah, it's really I mean, yeah. All right. So my brother's driving. We're in a Camry, my grandma's Camry, RIP. Um, and we're going like 120 because he's young and dumb too. And we go off the left side of the road with the tires like on the grass. And for some reason, like, dude, homie just like overcorrects like really bad, which is weird because like my brother can drive. Like, yeah. He's sick. <laughs> And we just spun. I blacked out by this point, but I just woke up like in the grass on the other side of the cables that run down the interstate. Mm -hmm. I was sitting shotgun. I went out the back window of the Camry along with my friend who was also in the back seat. And I just went flying through the air, hit my leg, I guess, only my leg on the cables that, that divide the highways and like nearly ripped it off. Like Tib Fib had a had a hole in my leg the surgeon said it was five inches by seven inches was the hole in my leg it's crazy the hole's kind of underselling the size of that yeah it's like i i mean i really almost ripped my leg yeah. off like completely dude so that was super gnarly and i got a settlement for it when i turned 18 somebody else involved or something no, I don't know how it happened. My dad went to bat. My dad's like super fun. Maybe like medical settlement or something. Yeah, okay. something like that. Yeah. Um, my dad's super smart and he just like, I mean, he figured out how to do it and did it and got me some money. I think I got like 120 grand when I, when I turned uh, 18. No, it might have been, might have been like 140 or something. I don't know. I paid for my college. I was going to say. I paid for my college yeah. with that, which was so sick because it lifted all the weight off my parents. And it's like, 
I just paid for my college all cash up front, which was so tight because then I don't have student loans. And if I wasn't able to do that, it would have been a lot fucking harder to chase my dream. This whole thing probably wouldn't happen. It probably wouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? So like, okay, I got a settlement for 140, let's say. I think college was like 120, 125. So it's like I had like 10 or 15 G's left over when I was, when I graduated. And I was just kind of floating on And if you're living like kind of Oh, wake border bum yeah you're bum it goes far i didn't pay rent i haven't paid rent since college <laughs> okay i mean yeah it makes sense i i oh, yeah i haven't paid rent since college i mean i got a mortgage now but besides that like yeah yeah i'm living cheap you know what i mean all right so that's your kind of situation is still yeah. got a little bit so left. i'm just milking that yeah. yeah and cruising and just trying to make this wakeboard thing happen and I'm like trying my damnedest, you know what I mean? I bought camera gear with that leftover money. I bought a computer with that leftover money. Like I'm trying to make videos because it's like we're in the digital age. It's like you got to make content, you know. That's when Instagram starting to come around and stuff. So it's like I'm just trying to do my thing, dude. Yeah, you got Let's those get, 15 second videos popping up, you know? Dude, yeah, those are the days. Yeah, and it was like, yeah, we're just about that life. Let's get these clips. All right, so there are two years. You're getting a lot of footage. There's a lot of footage coming out. You're hitting the bus. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff happening at uh, Egyptopia. So much fun stuff. So what's next after that? Because you're there two years. What what comes next um, after this Egyptopia part of your life? I think I move back to Charleston. Okay. Stay in. Stay in. I think just, I think just couch surfing. Okay. In Charleston. Some, some homies. Some homies for sure. Cause I just didn't really know my direction. Yeah. So then I think we're here, dude. I think we're, I know Blake, I know Quinn, I know Quint, I know Steez. I know, I know some homies, you know what I mean? I'm like starting to get connected in the scene and stuff. Um, I've been to Valdosta. Did you ever have plans to go to Blake's? So that, this that, is it. Okay, this is that part. This is it. Blake and his dad hit me up, and they want me to manage Blake's cable park, his 2.0, at the old B-Town. So, and they want to pay me for it, like as a gig. And, you know, they got money. And Blake was cool. I always fuck with Blake. And I was like, Hell yeah, this is my next move. I'm moving up to Atlanta. I'm going to stay with Blake. And I'm, I was basically, like, going to be kind of Blake's manager in a way because he wanted someone to help him film and get clips and edit and also, you know, come up with ideas for the park and build. And, you know, it was like we were just going to be a crew kind of, and we were going to run it up at B-Town because that's when Blake was still, like, super into it. They were trying to build stuff and film and everything like that. So then they hit me up, and I was like, absolutely, I'm on my way. So now I packed up everything from Charleston, and I'm on my way to Atlanta. But and then I, but I've always had, and by this time, Valdosta Weight Compound is like, they're off the ground. Yeah. They're spinning. Full size. Full size. Yep, full size. Full up size and running. is spinning, dude. So it's like... Well, I'm going to swing through there on my way up to Atlanta and just for a couple days and, yeah, and just kick it with them on my way up because, like, why not, you know? I love wakeboarding. Um, This is a brand-new park. It's my homie's Quinn, Quinn's park. This he says it's going to be insane. I'm going to see it, you yeah. know what I mean? And so I swing through, and then – and then Blake, I don't know what happened. They like, I think they just kind of, like, ghosted me. Like, they didn't – they just didn't they were like ah yeah nah like we don't we don't want that anymore or something and i had all my stuff packed up with me like i just moved my life from charleston in my in my truck to uh like on the way to atlanta and i'm at valdosta with everything i own and then i kind of get dumped on for this gig that i'm supposed to be going to and then quinn's just like Dude, just stay here. Like, just just stay in the barracks, you know? And never left. So what are those first few weeks and months like at Valdosta? Building. 
building. So full size is spinning, but it's not loaded with defo not, yeah. dude. And it's like a mud pit too. Like the grass isn't really there. Like the features aren't there. I mean, it's spinning and stuff. And we got some old features from the the 2.0 that was at the front of the property in. But is I mean, it's nowhere near what it is like now. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so we were really just building a lot, and we were shredding too. Sure, because the 2.0 was like so easy to build on and and ride these features like you could set up a new rail in five ten minutes with if you have the right materials you know so we're but a lot of it was also building building stuff like they were building the skate park they were building finishing the docks and building features and it was still just a lot of building and it wasn't yeah i got i got kind of burnt out a little bit because I came from my world where it was like, let's get these clips. And then I, I moved to Quinn's Cable Park, and it wasn't quite set up to where it's just like, yeah, let's get these clips. Yeah, it's we're like, still getting this thing off the ground. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, uh, we got to build these features. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, we built a bunch of features, and we were getting off the ground, and, and then it kind of happened that we just had a meeting, and I was like, yo, we like we need to get clips like we need to document this you know because if you don't really document it like you're gonna regret it later people need to see this yeah like yeah yeah, you know what i mean like i remember we had like uh and vibes are so high like so high back then not that they're not high still but like you you know you're just like buzzing it's new yeah Yeah. you know what i mean like Vibes are so sick, dude, and people are coming through, and pros are coming through, and but then yeah, we just sat down, and that's when we came up with the coalition, and we were like, we're gonna film a video, and it's gonna be called the coalition, and we had like a meeting about the song, and that's like when we picked that song and stuff, and and then we just started filming, and that's when that's when that kind of just happened. Because it's like, I, I I remember saying, like, it's so dope, like, what we're doing right now. And we're, you know, we're working our asses off and we're building, building, building. But, like, if we don't step back and take the time to film, like, we're going to regret it later. Like, yeah. we need to document this. And we're, and we're, like, trying to be pro riders, too. You know what I mean? So it's like. You're balancing several things at once right now. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's film, dude. And then. So that's a push that you're making when you're there. You're like, hey, guys, you're one of the leaders of the charge of that. Everyone's. Everyone's on board, but it's like everyone's on. You're jumping in, saying, "Hey guys, we need to do this." Well, also, it's like I I have the cameras and stuff too, because I already have all that. You've been editing for a while too. Yeah, Yeah. I dropped money on my camera equipment. I still have my Sigma seventy to two hundred. Like I bought that when I was in college, or when I I don't know, like way back in the day, and it's like. I still use that on my photo camera, and it's a banging ass lens. I paid like fourteen hundred dollars for it back in the day. Oh yeah, a lens. That lens is sick. Damn, sick. So like, I had good glass and everything, yeah. you know. So we're shooting, and so motivated to shoot. I love videos. I love edits. Always loved edits. I love watching them. You know, they give you the vibe. They make my dick hard, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so you you did say though that you were getting a little bit burnt here and there just because we were working so much yeah and i wanted to i wanted to film i wanted to make edits and we're like at one of the most unique parks in the world which the world doesn't even know yet yeah and it's like we need to do this I mean, this is a, this is a never been done thing when it comes to wake parks. Yeah, this, it's this. like I don't know what it's going to turn into or anything. It's like we're just going to call ourselves the coalition because the definition of the coalition matches what we're doing too. It's like it's a good word for us. It's like I mean, the coalition is just like like minded individuals working together to achieve a common goal, and it's like what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Nail meat. <head>. That's <laughs> yeah, us. like that sounds good. I like that. So at, at this point, what's the relationship like with? slingshot because it quinn it sounds like quinn has a pretty good relationship with them already yeah through the past few years i would say good and getting better okay and then getting really good once we proved that valdosta is what quinn had 
always been promising people it was going to be, and no one fucking listened. Talk about a guy that nailed it out of the fucking park. Dude. <laughs> right? Yeah. And how has no other parks adopted that mentality? Like, like how is there not more 2.0s with just grass caps? Yeah. Blows my mind. Still. I really want a 2.0 at some point in my life. Guess what? Grass caps. <laughs> Like, are you kidding me? It's so sick. It's less it's water. So, <laughs> it's less water, so easy to build features and stuff. It's insane. Like, the Corexes we have with the with the HDPE stands, bro, it's so easy to build a setup. It's, like, insane. Yeah. So, yes, everything with slingshots, just good and getting better. Because once Coalition hit, like, it hit Alliance and... You know, RIP Alliance, but that was the shit back in the day. Yeah, you're checking that. when you, every day, my dog. Like, yeah. and if you get, you don't even need a lot of comments either. Like, you get nine comments on Alliance.com. Like, what's up? Like, I still remember. I think like it might have more now, but like my first edit is like I got 13 comments on that thing. You know what I mean? I don't even care that half of them are bad. <laughs> it's like it's all about that comment, dog. I'm getting the people going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like that's yeah, that's good. You're on you're on your way up. You know. So we're just building, filming, shooting. You know, we drop Coalition One, Two. All right, so I want to jump into the coalition edits in a, in a in a second here, but I think before we do that, grab so, that LF and wheel of questions, and I think we dive into that this segment here. Oh, shire. The LF and wheel of questions. Okay, let's go. Yeah, go ahead and grab that sucker slider in the middle here. So we got the uh, LF and. Wheel of Questions presented by Liquid Force. I told so. Hunter I didn't want to chug a beer because I'm really bad at well, chugging beers. And You said you were lactose intolerant too. Is that yeah. truth? Yeah, that's facts. Not chugging milk, dude. So if it lands on milk, what are we going to do? I'll butt chug milk. Well, I don't think that would fly <laughs> on YouTube, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So would you, rather, would you rather do a beer then if it's on milk? Are you gonna, are I mean, you, I'll just chug like what I have here. You're going to pull the bobby. You're gonna chug half a beer. You're gonna do, you're gonna be that guy. I'm just you do you. Fuck, dude. But that's dude. You know what you're doing. I just how's don't like ice. be like oh dude. I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm not, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I know what I'm doing. You know what I'm doing. You know what you're yeah. doing. Then basically call me a bitch. <laughs> yeah, kind of a little bit. <laughs> Damn it. Well, let's. Uh, well, let's how just, about we cross that bridge? When we yeah, get yeah, there. yeah. Exactly. Let's just shut up. Let fate decide. Oh, this is uh. So this isn't, it didn't land on beer or milk, unfortunately. I was really hoping it would have, but this is... Oh, yeah. The question is, last Wake movie you watched in full? So, cover to cover like a book would? Opening this, credits to closing credits. Dude, it's like, it's going to sound narcissistic, but it was like probably a Coalition movie. Okay. Because I really love those movies and i love reliving those memories yeah. of those different full lengths with the different homies like ah uh, ollie bremlin section from the second one is like one of my favorite parts ever and i just love the vibe and it's so sick and i love ollie and miss ollie so much and it's like i like rewatching that and you know what like dude we made dude we made sick movies and they like don't get recognized at all <laughs> We'll talk about the movies in a little bit because I got, we're going to go like, through Like, it's all kind of it. funny. Like, we, it, people just like, they just like, they just like bump over them. And it's like, people want to talk movies and like, they'll like send out this like inside wake news and stuff. And they're like talking full length movies and we need more. And here's a list of ones you should know and stuff. And it's like, uh, y'all didn't, y'all didn't put our movies on there. <laughs> and it's like, what, what, like, what, like, what it, did we do something wrong? No, I don't think so. You know, I don't know. That's just weird to me because it's like we definitely get praise for it, but then people just kind of want to jump over it when people are talking about like. Well, when was the last? When did the third movie? one come out? <sighs> what? I don't know. I'm bad with timelines. So, so am I. A couple unless ago, unless right? it's a final cut timeline, I'm pretty good with them. But <laughs> I'm not even the good real life timeline <laughs> shit. Nah, I don't know. I think we're looking. I mean, two years two at years. least, right? Two yeah, years. Two years. I think two years. Sure. Okay. okay, so time, time be moving. Yeah, we'll we'll get into movies in a minute though. Okay, but that was a okay. So one of yours, Coalition. Yeah, I know that's like bad to say, but that's the truth. Like, Anyone that jumps out that isn't 
One of your projects that you watched? Movie. Or I, mean, I guess full length edit, so over ten minutes. I mean I defo watch Scumline and okay. like that was tight. Yeah, that, that came out. Always fuck with Trevor Maurer and his style and his mentality and like Damn, their space tapes edit was so tight too. Yeah, and like Trevor Maurer's some of his tricks in there was such a fan of, and like, yeah, big fan. He's of got it. a good vision. Big fan of that dude yeah. for sure. All in all, um, all right. So yeah, definitely watch Scumline. Yeah, that like the boat, you know, the thing, the the huge barge, the quarter pipe. Oh my three. god, yeah. It's like the sickest wakeboarding clip you can. How fun would that be? You dude? can shoot. Like, if you're traditionally wakeboarding, do shit like that. Yeah. Because that is mind-blowing. Yeah. And it looks incredible. And it's like, that's tight. I can get behind that. Yeah. He's got a, he's got a vision, dude. And it's very yeah, apparent it's and obvious. Watching and he's videos. so good. He's such a good cinematographer and editor. And, you know, he's... He's 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 good. He's a pro, dude. He's, he's a pro. He's good. Yeah, he's very good. But, I mean, obviously, I watch them all. I watch everything. Like... I might not post about it. Well, I probably do on Space Mob because I try to promote like everything that I think is dope and yeah. should be promoted. But I watch everything. If someone drops an edit, I watch, dude. Tim Van Dortmont, Sahara Cowboy, crush. They crushed it. So sick. Love that, dude. He came to Valdosta. I made a little cheeky edit with him, too. It was, when was that, dude? I don't know. That was a while ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. I remember those clips. Yeah. A while ago. So, all right. So, anything that's coming out, young cats, you're putting a full edit. It's it's seeing the eyes of Wes. Wes is, Wes yeah. is seeing I it. really want to, like, I just don't have enough t- time. But I really, like, turn Space Mob, the website, into a place where you go to see content. Yeah. And where people are counting likes and comments. And it's not like Instagram where you get a hundred comments it's like i want it to be like alliance og days where it's like you got six i'm like well and there's and you're thought like, behind these comments. and you're like i'm proud of that six yeah. you know what i mean and it like it hits different yeah. so i mean maybe that's in the works for the future but i'd love to have that again because i think it's so sick i think it's, it's very like, important you know what i mean and it's like if you make it on that site you're hyped because yeah. That person was watching, and they think your shit's and, dope. And there's a level, there's a standard that you have to be yeah, above and, to get there. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't care, whatever. I think I am that person that yeah. can make those decisions of this edit should go on there, this edit should not go on there. You know what I mean? And, yeah. like, I, I think I can be that person. Sweet. Yeah. All right. That was, that was a good answer. We got a couple, uh, couple good edits. I mean, if you haven't watched any of the Coalition movies or Scumline, definitely. Yeah. Give those a peek. I mean, and formats and stuff. I mean, formats is tight. That's worth at least, at least a yearly rewatch at a minimum. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So we were, we were talking coalition. Yeah. Um, and we got a, uh, well, let's talk coalition edits. And I got a Patreon question from Ollie that I can jump into. But okay. So you were kind of talking about the, what sparked the motivation was you need to document this shit. This has got to happen. We yeah. got to get and I just want to make edits. And you want to make edits. You're there to ride. You're there to film. You're there yeah. to build, too. I'm there to progress my career. Yeah. Like, that is that is in my head. It's like, I'm trying to run this shit up. I want to be a pro wakeboarder. Yeah. That's always been my goal. Like, so, in those early edits, the rules, I would say, were loose when it comes to helmets, vests, setups were gnarly. Yeah, we were so loose, too. You get any flack from, from the... Yeah. Community about that? Yeah. But I think it wasn't until we got the flack. I mean, when we got the flack, like, we would we would cut back, you know? Because we didn't, we don't want to, like, especially when people start talking about kids and shit. It's like, yo, these kids look up to you, and, like, then they're going to be riding without helmets and vests and stuff. And we're like, okay, damn, like, you're right, you know? So yeah. then we put them on. But back in the days, like, we were just loose, dude. Ride naked, like, no helmets, no vests, like, just boardies in the summer. Like, God. She was sick too, you know, but it's not, you know, it's not for the kids. Absolutely. And trick love the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so as time has gone on, you, you've gone through 10 coalition edits and you, like you said, you got 11 coming. Yeah. Um, and the videos have become, I would say less frequent, right? Because they would, uh, when you started out, it seemed like it was. Well, couple, they were kind of less composed too. Yeah. Like it was kind of just. More raw, a little bit more raw. A little, definitely more raw. Yeah. I look back at like, well, 
it's really like one and two, and then like four, five, six were kind of like raw. Three was dope. Yeah, yeah. Because, and three was dope because we knew we were going to be playing it at Alliance Beers and Premieres at Surf Expo. So we worked our dicks off for it. And we were like, this one? Because, I mean, that was a big thing back then. And, like, we're all trying to progress our careers. And, yeah, for that edit, it was me, Quinn, and Ollie Bremlin. So it's like, that that was our crew. It was the Dose to Buy crew. I think I even named the thing Dose to Buy Edition. Mm-hmm. And so we were just gung-ho. And that was, that was when my bollard rail came into play. That I wanted, I saw... I saw an Instagram of some snowboard rail that was similar to that. And I was just like, that is the sickest thing ever. And I'm going to build a bollard rail. I just didn't know how. And at that point, I was getting pretty broke, too. I was running low on the old funds. So I didn't know how I was going to do it. Um, But ended up getting it done by... I guess we can roll into... Yeah, I mean, this is the time. Roll I was going to ask about it, but let's roll, talk about... Roll into the stealing the bollards and, yeah. and getting it done. So I was helping Quinn move some stuff to a storage unit there in town in Valdosta. And then we were just moving some shit. And there was all these red bollards at the back of this. Like We're just like at the back. It's dark. There's no one there. And we're just unloading this stuff. And I was like, Quinn, like can we just fucking take eight of these things right now? And like, these are my bollards, dude. And I wanted to make this happen. And, and I was, I was already like manifesting this fucking cover to happen kind of at the same time. Like Bradley Rutledge was working for Alliance and I was hitting up Brad cause I'd already known him from like Jibtopia and stuff. Like we were kind of clicked up a little bit. And I'm like, yo, dude, I got an idea for a rail. It is absolutely NBD and wakeboarding. I'm going to make it look amazing. And I want a cover. So it's like, so I'm just like so hungry to get this cover for Alliance that I just didn't even, you know, I could say I was going to put them back, but I probably wasn't because I had to cut them and shit anyway to yeah. like make them fit the hill or whatever. But um, so we ended up stealing these bollards and I built this rail. And, like, while I'm still, like, negotiating this contract or negotiating this uh, cover, which took a while, it was a lot of back and forth of just going, like, yeah, there's, like, 25% chance you'll get it. And then it's, like, going up and up and up and whatever. And then one day, so I built the rail, and it's just chilling on the 2.0, and a private investigator rolls up to the park. P.I. P.I little scary looking moth dude and i'm like riding on the full size and then he like rolls up and they like flag me in because he's like he's like i'm here to talk about those red bollards and they're like wes you know <laughs> there's no one else you're you gonna source those <laughs> yeah i'm like ah that's me who you got to talk to and stuff and the guy was cool he wasn't overly like you're going to jail and shit and super intimidating he was like he was like, look, the guy you stole these from is very mad. And um, the cost of these ballers was like, they're not that cheap. And it was like, if it's over $500, then it's like a felony mm-hmm. charge or whatever. So he's like, you could be facing a felony charge and stuff. And, you know, I'm like shaking in my boots, dude, just scared and being like, so apologetic and you know we'll bring them back and this and that or i'll buy them new ones and stuff and we'll do whatever we need to do i'm so sorry i'm just you know i kind of explain like yo this is wakeboarding i had i have this dream and this and that you know just really like because i mean that's what it was too it's it's not like it's not i'm not a thief you know what i mean i just get caught i just got caught up in the hype of i'm trying to get this cover i gotta get these ballers somehow i can't buy them because i don't have that money but i'm getting them it's like i'm looking at goodwill they got blue ones i'm looking at mcdonald's they got yellow ones but that's a little hot you know you can't just roll up to mcdonald's and start pulling them off this thing you know we're moving we're moving this stuff in the storage unit we're at the back it's dark there's no one around i'm like yo we're taking these bollards right yeah. now. So then he's like, don't, do not contact the guy. He's mad. It's only going to make things worse and stuff. And he's like, 
I'm going to talk to him and I'm going to do my best, but like no promises. Is this guy's pissed? And we're like, okay, yeah, whatever. We're like, okay, you know, I'm not saying, yeah, whatever to do. We're like, okay, thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. We'll be in touch. And then as soon as the guy leaves, I'm like looking at Quinn. I'm like, fuck that. I'm calling this dude. So then we called the dude and explained the situation to him and asked to, if we could come up there and talk to him in person. I mean, and he agreed. And me and Quinn went up there and talked to him in person and just explained ourselves, you know, just being super genuine kids. Cause that's what we are too. Like we're not thieves. I'm going to talk to you and you can tell that I'm not just a low life scum. Who's like stealing your bollards to pawn off or anything. And we explained the situation. Homie was super cool. And I just had to buy him eight new ones to replace the ones that I had stolen. So I didn't have to rebuild my rail or anything because he's like, I don't want those. They're cut in half. <laughs> he fucked them up, You're man. buying me new ones. <laughs> so then, uh, yeah, I had to hit up my family to get some money and buy these bollards for the homie. And yeah. then it was squashed, which was sick. And I was like, thank God I called that guy. <laughs> yeah, because if you wouldn't have, I mean, who knows what would Who knows what would have happened. happened. It's like it could have been facing a fucking felony charge, dude. Yeah. That was crazy. He doesn't know who you are, what you want to do. and Exactly. And I was like, nah, I'm meeting this dude. Because then he's going to see. I'm just a passionate, hungry little dude just trying to get his cake, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, it was great. Glad and I ended up. Glad I did it. And ended up. And then it ended up, I got the cover. And it was like, it was like, all right, 75% or whatever, you're going to get this cover. And then Bradley's like, I'm going to come shoot it. And then we shot it. And then the percentages just, like, kept going up. Because, like, I mean, I did I did everything like I built this rail and then but I didn't only build it. I went and bought flowers and mulch and like I made this thing look good. It's baby. a cover. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we shot it in the I mean, shout out Bradley Rutledge. The photos look insane. They are. They're yeah. like it's shot in broad daylight and it looks like it's shot like at night, like with flat. It looks it's so sick. Like I love that photo. <laughs> Yeah. Like I'll I'll put that in if I, I, I find it. It's so good. That photo. I have the uh the printout from that surf expo that you get like the big poster board mm. of the cover. That photo got that hanging in my crib and like I'm so proud of that moment. And that was a springboard for my career. Like 100% getting that cover and bringing, you know, a new rail that's never been seen before into the sport and, you know, breaking that ice and that along with the Coalition Volume 3 was the first time that the the clips dropped of the rail also and yeah so that was just the sickest moment. so that's a good time to talk about it. i think you said it's a springboard for your career so up till that point what's your relationship looking like with slingshot because you said it was getting better and better and better where are you at right at that bollards point and then where are you at you know in the near future after that like i said i'm not a good timeline guy but so Whenever we were filming the first movie, which I guess was after that, right? Yeah. After volume oh, yeah. three. Yeah. That's when I got my first contract because I remember me and Quinn were in the car on this winch trip, getting clips, risking our lives. And that's when it we were like, dude, we need to get paid. Like, and and it's also, you know, we're coming, at least for me, like Quinn had the park. But it's like, I'm running out of money. And, like, I need to get paid or, like, these dreams are going to start diminishing. You know what I mean? So we call Jeff and it's like, I mean, I'm just kind of like, yo, dude, like, we're out here. We've been, you know, we've been supporting everything. We're repping your brand for however. And we're out in the streets. We're risking our lives for this. Like, we want a contract. And, oh, I think I jumped the gun, actually. Okay. Okay. So that's when we actually got our contract, like for like 300 bucks a month or something, like just foot in the door. But back then was huge for me. 300 bucks a month, dude. Like I can do so much with that because I'm living at the compound. Like I don't have a lot of expenses, you know? Yeah. But okay. So before that, before I actually had a contract, I'm hitting up Jeff and still trying to get a contract. Cause that's what, I mean, cause I'm hustling for this on, on the front end and the back end, you know what I mean? I'm making the edits and stuff, but I'm also, I'm trying to get sponsored. I'm not just the dude who's going to wait around until you knock at my door. It's like, I'm going to, I'm, I'm beating down your door, yeah. dude. 
And I was hitting up Jeff trying to get a contract. He's got no wiggle room to get me in or anything. And it's like, I don't even know if I really deserved it at that point. But he, you know, he doesn't have room to get me a contract. Um, but he knows that I do art. And then he offered me my first gig of doing the super ground board. And that, I'm so bad with years. It was like 15 or 16 or okay. whatever. Um, so then I did my first graphic for Slingshot, which was huge. And that got me a little bit of coin. And also just like, you know, gets my foot in the door with the behind the scenes of Slingshot. Yeah. And working with their graphic designers and stuff and, you know, starting to starting that road as well, which is huge. And also, like I said, I always wanted to do some snowboard graphics. All right. I am not connected to the snowboard scene at all, but I found wakeboarding. Now I'm doing wakeboard graphics. It's like, hell yeah, this yeah. is fucking sick. So then, yeah. And I think I was actually supposed to be doing Dylan Miller's board. It was for sure. I was supposed to be doing Dylan Miller's board and then they just kind of transferred it to the super ground. Cause it like just changed directions or something. They weren't using it for Dylan's board. It went to the super ground because like, there's a, um, on that Supergram, dude's wearing like some chucks and there's a Heshbacks logo on the chuck. And then he has like a Canadian Molson or something in his okay. hand, like dumping out because it was supposed to be his board. So I was like, I'm, well, I'm going to rep Heshbacks because that's what him and Taylor were doing yeah. back in the day. So, yeah. So then it's just got my foot in the door with graphics and then, and then I never stopped doing graphics and then eventually got a contract. And then it's just really just been building on that ever since. And obviously keeping up with the wakeboarding and filming and stuff. But yeah. but dream come true doing graphics. I love that. Because like, those boards, they don't really, they don't disappear either. You know what I mean? Like you do them and they go out, but next year comes along. But those boards are always like hanging on walls at parks and stuff. Dude, I mean, yeah, you watch, you, you see vintage wakeboards. Dude. He's got fucking every yeah. single one of them. Like they're they live around. forever. At least a couple of them do. You know, they're That's what always I'm hanging around. I was so hyped on that. Yeah. All right. So I think this is a good time to talk about Shredtown Jamboree. And we got a uh, Patreon question from Ollie Jerome. So if you guys want to jump on that Patreon, see who the guests are early, go ahead and submit a question. Yeah. Support grab matters, dudes. Yeah. yeah we got Wes on there. We got, good, we got a bunch yeah, of people on there. It's, yeah. It's, it's, for it's sure. Awesome. Like if you love wakeboarding and you're not supporting grab matters, like you really should because this is so good what you're doing for the sport. And I will say that. And I, ba it. I back it. My man. Yeah. I love it. All right. So we got a Patreon question from Ollie Jerome. So. Um, he wants to know what it what it was like when you showed up to Shredtown, the Shredtown Ranch for your first jamboree. So driving in on the RV with the full squad, getting to ride a private park for a few days. How did you approach that? You know, because there's a lot of big names there. There's a lot of pro riders there. It's a awesome setup. How did you approach that? Insane. Like just getting invited. Cause I had tried to qualify years before and never made it cause it was online voting and it was bullshit. Um, but it was just insane. It was a dream come true once again. Cause it was like, you know, we were on the mat, but like, we we're just like some grungy kids filming videos on this weird wakeboard dirt grass setup and like to get invited to that and show up with all these absolute legends was just mind blowing. dude. And it seemed like everyone fucked with us too. Really? Yeah, dude, for sure. That's sick. Cause I think we just put out that vibe and like, and we have that vibe too. And like, it wasn't, we didn't feel out of place. Like, I mean, I'll admit that kind of I did because, like, I'm, like, Quinn Quinn shreds. Like, Quinn charges. I'm a little bit more, like, niche rider. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not the banger, dude. Like, I'll build a banger rail and do a fitty on it, you know? So this is the second part of, of Ollie's question is, did you feel like you had to ride a different way or did you were you able to keep your vision and follow through with exactly how I you wanted to ride? I definitely felt pressure like do some shit on the setup but at the same time i kind of didn't because it's like they invited me for who i am also they didn't invite me for my bangers because i don't do that anyway you know so it's like i just got to do me and have fun and push the vibes you know and like 
And I feel like the videographers always like me because I do good on camera and can be funny and dumb and just like, I don't really care. You know, it's not, I'm not like, I don't really care what people think and stuff. So it's like, I just have fun and do my thing. So it's like, had some funny interviews with it. And, but I feel like I also shredded too. I definitely held my own, like not, you know, not at like the Raptor own level, Daniel Grant level, but it's like, people don't expect that anyway. Just, just go do your thing, you yeah. know? And, but all in all, like the experience was insane. And like meeting Davis and stuff like Davis is my fucking boy, dude. I mean, he's on my line right now. We're about to go play disc golf or something. While I'm down for yeah. sure, dude. Like he just won a tournament today, he dude. Did. That's yeah. like, he actually just called me. And I was like, and I was like, yo, sorry, I'm in the pot. He's like, yo, dude, I just called you to let you know I fucking won today. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just ripped, dude. And like, yeah. So me and Davis have been best buds ever since that. You know, we don't see each other all the time, but like when we do, we're hamming. Yeah. So that experience was absolutely insane. And by that time, I had some graphics with Slingshot, and we were shooting some product stuff while okay. we were out there. So really just. All good things, dude. All right, so you got a squad out there. You rip, have a good time. You feel like you kind of put down your riding. Come back. When when is the starting of Space Mob? And I guess it doesn't matter what year it is. It's is it after this whole Shredtown thing, the yeah. official start of it? Yeah. Okay. So how do you so. how do you come up with the name for Space Mob and, and the idea of officially naming the crew? Like, we're gonna make this a thing. Coalition edits, but this is a thing. Yeah. So it's a it's actually cool because it's a very distinct moment. We are in Atlanta filming for our first movie. It's like me, Quinn, Austin Pratt, and Cole. I don't think Cross wasn't there. I think that's it. Me, Pratt, Quinn, and Cole. That sounds about right. And Pratt's on Ronix at the time. And breaking a lot of boards and stuff. He's not, like, that hyped. And Ronix was making the Kinetic crew. And they were asking their riders what they should name this crew. And Pratt said Space Cadets. We should name the Ronix Space Cadets. And then they turned down that idea and named it the Kinetic crew. And we're like, fuck that, dude. Space Cadets is a sick name for a crew. Like, what? Like, how could they turn that down? And we're all fired up and backing our boy. Like, dude, what? That's bullshit. Like, Ronix Space Cadets? That is fire, dude. Yeah. And I was like, I still can't believe they they slept on that name. And I don't I don't know the back end from, you know, Ronix and what actually went down. Or I'm not trying to dog Ronix, but this is what I You know. just hyped on it and you're I'm like, just how hyped, did my boy down? and he says he pits Ronix Space Cadets and they turned it down and went with Kinetic Crew and he's all bummed on it. And then it just happened we were like, fuck that. Well, then we're going to be the Space Mob. And it just like happened. And it was just like Space Mob. That's tight, because I think we we're so hyped on Space Cadets. But I don't know why we didn't go with Space Cadets. But I think because that had already been pitched or something, yeah. you know? It's like, that was already in there. That had already been in their ears. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, let's... Can't but, just take it right away. Yeah. Take it right off. But. So then it just happened, and then, and then I drew the uh, Space Jam logo. Pretty sick logo. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the letters fit and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And Space Mob... Damn, it's such a good name. It, the the letters fit with so many things. Like, damn, I just did a Seinfeld logo that, like, looks so sick. It hadn't even dropped yet. But, like, the Bass Pro Shops logo that I just did, so hyped on that. I did a Simpsons logo that ain't dropped yet. Like, it just fits with so much yeah. shit. It's so fun, you know? And I always love ripping off logos. Like, love it. Because that's, like, skate vibe. They always do that in skateboarding. Because it's those logos are so recognizable, yeah. and then you bring them into your and like, it's just sport and fun. It's, it's, it's just fun, yeah. And so yeah, and that happened, and and ever since Space Mob happened, it it just had the ring, dude. Like the coalition is the coalition, but Space Mob just connected with people. People just like 
I don't know. It was off the tongue, dude. It's, yeah, yeah. It's something about it that just hit. Like, I mean, the coalition was already hitting, but once we became the space mob, it was like everyone wanted everyone wanted more. It was tight. So what was it at the beginning? Was it just a crew and that was it? Or were you like, oh, this is going to be kind of a media company or this is going to be a series Hell of edits it, with the... No what thought. What was it? Okay. No thought. And that's why it's so sick because it's not... It's so organic. We're yeah. not trying to be something. We were something. And the name came out of what we were, not what we were trying to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like we got around... Like, for the Coalition, we kind of sat around. We were like, all right, let's become this crew. And we became that crew. But then Space Mob was just, like, just came out of what we were and those relationships that we were sharing with winching and stuff and just being being boys. And then it just happened that it was a sick name that people can, I don't know, really latch on to. So what does, it, what does it mean to be a part of the Space Mob? I think that you just love wakeboarding and love creativity and – you take your boarding seriously and I don't know. Not too seriously though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That was, that even felt weird. Like, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I mean, people, I mean, it's definitely a crew. Like we're definitely a crew, but it's definitely not exclusive. Like you're in, you're out type shit, but well, Zeffy's having a tough time. Yeah, out happy there. with the pod Yo. right now. <laughs> <laughs> we got to spice it up. <laughs> so yeah. you said it's, you know, you're not in, you're not out. Are there people that are officially in the crew right now? Or is it more of a fluid, you kind of come through, you're, you maybe are part of it for a little bit, you're in some edits, you're kind of out of it. Or is there a, like a, a central... I don't know if there's a fine line. So yeah, it's a blurry kind of For gray. sure. I mean, if you're about it, you're about it. If you, I mean, I guess it's definitely, you know, it's a Valdosta thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, not exclusively. Like, if you're a homie, you're a homie, dude. We don't have an official team. Well, you did. You, you used to, right? On the site. Yeah, but not that really was, a thing anymore. I mean, but that, I mean, it's still up because I don't update the site, yeah, and that's yeah. kind of what I was talking about earlier that I want to get back on, maybe. But that was just me hitting up my friends too. Yeah, being like, "Are you down with this?" Like, yeah, do, yeah, yeah. Right. And I guess I was trying to make it something like that, but I don't know. It's just a vibe. Just it's, we're wakeboarders. That's I mean, Space Mob is wakeboarding. I think. I think that's the most important part is Space Mob is wakeboarding. Is it just cable wakeboarding? I don't know, dude. Dilly Millie's like hella mob, dude. And he's a boat rider. I made a Space Mob edit of Dilly Millie. Yeah. With boat riding in it. So I guess there's your answer. It's just about your mentality. I don't know. So some boat kid sitting in, you know, who, who knows where in... in America, he wants to be space mob, but he, he doesn't have a cable park close to him. Can he be space mob? Yeah, rep that shit. All right, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. I, I don't absolutely. know. I don't think you need permission to be in the mob. Like, if you fuck with us and what we do, and you love what we do, and you're connected in that space, like you, you then you're mob. Like, Frank Atkins, who, like, dug our ponds, like, randomly met this homie. Like, he's mob. Defo. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, never met this dude before, but, like, he's a homie now. And he came and dug our ponds pro bono for Yard Sale 5. And now we're, I think he's coming, actually, this, he's coming to v a VWC this weekend and staying for, like, five days. So I'm about to Heck go back yeah. up there and see him. Like, that's my fucking boy. Yeah, he's mob. Love it. So if you're down with the mob, then you are mob. All right. You know what I mean? There you go. Is that cool? That pff, Absolutely. If you're down with the mob, then you mob. All right. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to clip that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a uh, Patreon question from Austin Farr. So we're, we're talking space. We're talking... That's some, a wake skater from Canada, right? I believe so. Correct. Yeah. Sick one. So he's wondering, have you had any alien encounters or are you just a big fan? Man, hell no. I wish would be so tight, but also scary too in the same <laughs> way. But nah, I have not had an alien encounter, but Quinn has. 
he's had some trippy shit, and I ain't even gonna go into that. We'll let when I get Quinn yeah. in here, we'll go into that. Oh, because I'm and, curious. Yeah. Oh, defo, dude. That's so. a sick story, dude, for sure. But are you a fan of it? You're a fan of the yeah. Uh, oh, they're here, dude. Yeah. The uh, the 2018 coalition. One of my favorite graphics. I think it's another. Um, probably a good question to ask. But the 2018 coalition. Trey Senef showed me this thing on Google Earth. It's like off the coast of California, and the bottom graphic. Um, cause it's a whole scene, like the boat underwater with the, with the octopus and the octopus is like a kraken and it's, yeah, yeah, I'll put it, that it's, in right now. it's protecting colorful, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll put that yeah. In. Uh, and it's protecting this underwater city and that underwater city is drawn based on these, uh, these striations and stuff in the ocean floor off the coast of California. And then you can like kind of, and then you bring the angle down and you can see it's like, and it looks like this structure that I drew, like this thing that I drew on the coalition. And the, the, the fucking coordinates of this thing is on the coalition. Like you can look it up, just go on the board and type in these coordinates and it'll take you to this thing off the coast of California. And you can see it on Google Earth. And it looks so crazy. It's like an underwater structure. And then it has like these weird like striations that like i don't know it doesn't look like an airport but i like you know stretched it to be like oh that could be an airport or some shit and that's on. what i depicted it as in the graphic but like yeah that's a real place the coordinates are written on the board you can type it in you can go check it out for yourself sick and shout out trey senna for sending me that and he's all he's always sending me i'll shit put like i'll that. put that in that's pretty tight it's sick dude so i love that all right so we're talking space mob crew how important is it to have a crew in wakeboarding Depending, it, it just, it depends what you're trying to do. Okay. If you're trying to film, if you're trying to winch, essential. If you're trying to just film reels, you don't need a crew. You know what I mean? If you're trying to film a full part, you need at least half a crew. Kind of maybe, yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah. need, you need something. I don't know if it's a full winch crew. Well, if you're trying to film a winch, you, you, you know what I mean? It, it depends yeah. on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to winch, you need a full dedicated crew. Maybe a better question is, is it easier to make a bigger impact on the scene of wakeboarding as a whole with a crew? I don't know. I think, I think it's different for everyone. And I think you can make an insane impact on by your damn self. Yeah. I mean, look at Pedro Caldas. Does Pedro have a crew, per se? Look at Trent Stuckey, yeah. Look at Trent Stuckey. Trent Stuckey's not in a fucking crew that I know of. I mean, he's on the Ronick squad and shit like that, but, like, yeah, look at those impacts. And Felix Gorgi, he doesn't necessarily have a crew that he claims, yeah. you know? He's one of the most influential riders of all time in my book. I mean, I love Felix's riding. Yeah. Favorite. He's dope. Favorite, for sure. I love Felix. Okay. So, yeah, it I don't kind know. Of choose your adventure. Choose your path. Yeah. It could be. It could not be. Depending on what you're trying to do. Yeah. If what you're trying to do is this and you need that, then get that. If you're a contest cat and you're trying to win some contests. Go train yeah. and get that bag or whatever you're into, you know? I don't think there's any formula. There's definitely not a formula to this shit. It's like, do what I think. The best advice you can give is do what this thing says inside of you because that's what will drive you the most, you know? And, like, and, and forced crews isn't going to work either. It's not going to last. That's for not. Sure. Yeah. You got to feel that shit. And then it might work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can't force anything. Like, I mean, you can, but, like, the best shit happens organically. I mean, I'm not saying you can't make moves to make stuff happen, but... Yeah, I think right. just just do do what you want to do. If you want like to film, if you want to film movies and winch, then like find some people who want to do find, the same thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then see if you work. You know what I mean? It's like it's not that hard, dude. If you want to winch, you got Instagram right here. You got this tool that you can reach any mother. You can reach anybody on planet Earth that wakeboards and see if you want to link up and go winch for yeah. a day. 
see if it works a week you know what i mean find your crew reach out it's the day and age to do it it's easier than ever it really is you gotta you know downsides of social media you gotta take advantage of the upsides though you yeah. really gotta yeah. lean into those it's right there in front of you so we were talking slingshot a little bit earlier so you were talking about when you kind of officially got that first contract for 300 bucks a month or whatever it was is there a yeah. sense of relief maybe because you were doing graphics as well is there a little bit of like a sense of relief that okay i'm i'm in the door enough to where brand is saying you're worth at least oh hell yeah to get past that point. hell yeah motivated like hungry starving loved it dude are you kidding me still love it like it's my dream dude 100 percent. that's why it's like go i mean go 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 so when you got that you know that moment happened it wasn't a uh it was it was a more motivation to even keep going even more like you're getting validated in what you're doing so you need to push even harder yeah rather than okay i can kind of let up a little bit now 100 percent. yeah skinny pedal on the right <laughs> <laughs> big toe baby push it down <laughs> yeah. hell yeah damn right dude and I loved it, you know. It's like now, now I'm getting, now I'm getting a little bit of coin for doing what I love, and then it just opened up the doors. And as the popularity of Valdosta kind of grew, and you had more people coming through, and more people to film with, and just, just go, dude. So, talking slingshot, the Space Mob crew, you know, now is a, a thing. At, at this point in time, we're talking about, and Shred Town is, you know, on their way out whether it's obvious to everybody else or not, yeah. it, it's, it was happening. Oh, yeah. Is that something that was... Were you aware of that, in a sense, Space Mom might be kind of coming in as mm. Shredtown's leaving, and this is a transition that Slingshot's having? Well, I think I wouldn't have thought about it as much, but, like, Shredtown was leaving, and we got their boot. Yeah. So then it made it pretty clear cut that it's like, we're kind of the new shred town, you know what I mean? Like, so then, yeah, I mean. So at the was, time, it wasn't necessarily something where it was communicated that it was. Nah, it wasn't like, all right, these guys are out and you're going to fill their their spot. It wasn't anything like that because for a while we were just coexisting with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, and, it, and it was never competition or anything like, like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I hope they stop soon so we can take their spot or anything like that. Like, never anything like that like, yeah those dudes are the best dude they are the best absolutely <laughs> uh speaking of uh you know space mob and groups and stuff do you think you'd be a pro wakeboarder without space mob yeah okay what do you think that path would 100 like? because i was so hungry it didn't matter where i was i was filming and getting clips and making edits you would have pushed your way to the top or to a, a position i would have tried my absolute hardest to no matter where I was no matter if I would have been at B-Town or staying at Valdosta and not to say that Valdosta didn't make that happen for me but like would I have become a pro wakeboarder without Valdosta? Hell yeah because I was that motivated I was going. Just happened to be where you were I was going yeah because I was already on my way up dude like I was already on my way up at Trophy Lakes, and then and in the Philippines, and, and then at Jibtopia. It's like, what, I was going to stop? Like, hell no, I was going to keep going up, and I was going to keep searching for that next part that, that I saw opportunity at and getting clips. It's really like, I'm, I'm about these clips, dude. That's what I want. I love it. And, yeah, I mean, being with Valdosta is like, I mean, that shit was just, it's crazy. Because the amount of creativity that you can express at that place, that park is like, and that's why, that's why I can't leave either. Because I can do what I want to do and build. I can like have the freedom, the creativity that I want. I can express it at that park. Like I just built a basketball goal, Brett and dunked i alley ooped down that shit you know and like what other part can you build a basketball goal at not a lot not a lot 
That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, I'm definitely blessed to have linked up with Valdosta. And, you know, that's why I've been here forever because I can't leave. Like, I take trips and stuff, but it's my home because that's – it's sick. It's the sickest. Yeah. If you're about these clips and you're a rider about these clips, there's no better park in the world. If you're taking laps at a cable and you haven't been to Valdosta. And I that. know that now because I've been around the world. I've been around the block. I've been to the hottest cables in the world. Valdosta Weight Compound is the best cable in the world. I'm going to clip that Hands too. down. <laughs> it, but it is, yeah. dude. The conditions you get out there, it's insane all the time. It's so sick. I love it. Like even riding O-Dub today, I was like, damn, like, Riding laps at Valdosta is so chill and smooth and feel good. Like, riding other cables feels just, like, feels hectic. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy. I get that. I definitely get that. So, definitely blessed to have met Valdosta, but I was going up regardless. Yeah. I'm a true believer in that. Because I was just too hungry, dude. You're banging down doors. I was too hungry. It was going to happen. I'm eating. So, we're talking... We're talking some sponsorships. I think we uh, kind of pivot to getting your pro model helmet with ProTech. So this is more, I mean, somewhat more recently, right? Not not way back when, but yeah. I'm wondering how this opportunity came about because we had in wakeboarding, I think we had Sandbox for a while. And I think yeah. some people kind of had deals with Sandbox, but it was never like, yeah. you know, I a mean, full-on design your own helmet type thing. with a And ProTech is a historic company with yeah. legendary people involved yeah. in it. So how does this happen? Dude, they just came to me and was like, yo, dude, you're so sick. I want to make a helmet for you. <laughs> yeah, that's, they came to wakeboarding, a skate company, for sure. Hell no, bro. <laughs> We're talking about being hungry and beating down doors. It took me two years to crack ProTech, like, of relentless, relentless, like, hitting them up and stuff. To the point where, where I was just like, I'm just going to hit this dude with, like, some semi-rude shit because it's not happening anyway. So, like, I might as well be, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, lay it all out there and go for broke because it's basically not happening anyway. So, I might as well just, like, all right, last time. <laughs> Hail Mary, baby. Let's Hail Mary, you know what I'm saying? And then homie picked up the rock. And then we and then we started working together. That's what he responded to. Okay. Yeah, but it, I mean, yeah, it took two years. So now, what's it look like? I mean, you not you, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bummer to hear. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, Protect's going through. Um, they're going through some changes right now. A lot of brands are. A lot of companies. A lot are. of brands are. Um, but I'm sticking it out with them, and we'll see what it looks like. Sweet. But um, uh, I got my third helmet designed and stuff, but. COVID just messed up everything, dude. COVID messed up every brand. Even if they pretend like they didn't, it did. Like, COVID messed up a lot for a lot of businesses, a lot of industries. And and they're all recovering from that. It took a lot of them to the moon, and then now they're not realizing how to come back down to earth. Yes. Great. Yeah. I came up with that one right now. I feel pretty good about that it. That was not great. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. But, okay, so. That was perfect. <laughs> Why do you prefer the full cut helmet? Look. It's a big look thing for you. 100%. I just like the way it looked. I think it was the first one. It might have been Ty Morlang. It was Ty. Ty Morlang showed up. He stayed at Valdosta for a good stint, and he was wearing a full cut. And then he got another one or left and left his old one or something. Then I just started rocking it and just loved it. Loved the look. Just like old school skater vibe. Yeah. And but not only the look, like the function is insane, dude. We're like, talking ear protection. Is that kind of where you're getting I at mean, a little bit? No. Okay, that that's a plus, but like you're not really how often are you hitting your ear? Okay. I mean in the water, like water rushing in, ear blown out an eardrum. That's maybe, what I was yeah. Towards. Maybe, I don't know. yeah. Maybe I don't yeah. One, so I mean, honestly, like whiplash, probably not the best helmet for. <laughs> Helmets aren't good for whiplash. Yeah. That's yeah. why I mean that's why it's argued like uh, wake skaters and stuff wearing helmets because like the 99% of their falls are whiplash. And that's why you ain't riding them on the, walking them on the boat. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, they don't help whiplash, but like you put that helmet on and it just, it cups your head and it doesn't shake 
and it doesn't go like this and it doesn't go like that and it just it just sits right here and to have that just like it's so annoying dude i mean you know the clips of like all this like oh yeah it looks and that's one of the most distracting things it looks bad in yeah. clips like so yeah Especially because in a lot of clips, you end up looking at the dude's head or face because it's just kind of naturally what humans do, yeah. right? You're kind of looking at the yeah. dude's, what's going on? So yeah. or girls, yeah, yeah. So okay, full, it just works, dude. Full cut is a uh, function, huge function, and I think I just you like the fit too. I just think it look. I, I mean, at the beginning, it's like it just looks sick, but then it was like, oh, it feels great too, and it yeah. doesn't shake around and stuff. And then I was just like sold. Like if I wasn't sponsored by Protech, I'd just buy a Protech helmet every year rocket so you get royalties on each one of those is that how that works or is it flat contract yeah that was, <laughs> there were two questions there and you answered them both <laughs> i'll say i'll take it as uh both okay. yeah i yeah so i had a i had a small contract with him and then i was getting royalties also okay. on the helmets sick yeah. and i feel like i've seen these people rock these non-wakeboarders bro don't know dude, what i get is. tagged in some <laughs> stuff and i'm like what that's so that's sick, sick dude yeah. yeah i love it there was like some there was some like skate homies repping them and like some good skate homies that were like crushing bowls and stuff and they were they were rocking especially the uh the black one with the white piping that one was hot yeah i i, I do say I, I think i did prefer the black over the white yeah that, that one was just, hot. that's a person that one was hot yeah. for sure that was the best one so we got a patreon question from james Peasty. In, okay. in talking about the uh, helmets and you just alluded to it but he's wondering will there be a new protect wmj helmet design anytime soon sounds like something in the works yeah i would just say i hope you know yeah. i'm i'm really like i love protect and there's not another helmet brand that i would ride for is there another helmet brand no i wouldn't i wouldn't wear another helmet like i want to ride a, i want to ride a full tech a full cut whether they're supporting me or not yeah because it's the best helmet ever for wakeboarding so, so part, part two of this guy's uh, James question is, can you please come up with something cool, not sunglasses, like a space visor or whatever just doesn't look like shit and can be worn while riding cable at a really sunny day on a really sunny day. It's just the worst thing for your eyes to be on the water after a long time. <laughs> Think of it like a helmet for your eyes going across the helmet. So he's talking visor. No. Well, sorry, James. And no, then, nah, nah. Wear sunnies. I wear sunnies sometimes. I don't mind the sunnies. No, it's good until they get water on them, but like before that, feels pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Put rain X on your sunnies, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone tried that? <laughs> that would be sick, dude. But yeah, I mean, yeah, wear sunnies. It is bright. Some days it's, it, especially it, it, if you're at a unit park, dude. It is brutal. I know, dude. Yeah. There's just light bounces everywhere. <laughs> it's sunny. And it's yeah. just like, yeah. Especially if you got, li I got light eyes. So it's like, yeah. my eyes do not do well with, with super bright time. So yeah, rock the shades, James. Yeah, rock the shades. Jago. Put on some shades for yeah. sure. For sure. Go. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into the movies. So Coalition Volume 1. Movie time. What's yeah. up? Uh, so being the brainchild of a full length film is not an easy task. Uh, it's stressful at most times, I would assume. Um, why did ah. you guys decide? Stressful a lot of times. Why did you guys decide to go and do a full length wakeboard movie? Because that's what we love. That's what we like to watch. Full. I mean, if you can, if you can, if you can do it, it's like we watch. I mean, do you remember like Defy? <laughs> yeah. And like, I mean, we watched back in the day. Is like it was. That's what it was about. You know, like pointless and stuff. Like that era was so long before me that like i didn't grow up on that type of stuff same yeah um but yeah the defy and then what was the ronix movie or the, was that defy prime and defy were both kilgus movies mm. i don't know what ronix movie the ronix movie where they had the step up pool at radar lake that was defy that was defy yeah yeah like watch that so many times and then and then furthermore, like uh, the Shred Town movies, like, oh, my God, DTG bro. on repeat. Well, th there's the answer right there. It's like, that's what I watched when we were living at Jibtopia. We watched Drop the Gun like, oh, my God, <laughs> every night because uh, they had the bar with the TVs and we would drink and hang out and we're watching movies, dude, wakeboard movies, because that's what we do every day. 
So, and now we had the crew, you know what I mean? The crew. Yeah, the nat- means. Yeah. The crew naturally came together and it was like, filmed a couple edits and we were getting some hype and it was like, y'all know what's next, right? Like, let's make a movie, dude. Yeah. And so then we just set out to make the coalition the movie. So let's talk your part. So you open with a double part, basically, or it is a double part, and yeah. it's got cable, then winch. How important was it for you to have a full winch part in that movie? Not that important. Really? To me, at the time, nah. It just happened like that. Like, you had enough clips to be able to Yeah, it just it. happened like that, that the, the songs didn't quite fit for mashing everything together. And it kind of fit for two songs. And I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to make, you know, my cable part to this song. And then I'll make my winch part to this song. And it just kind of happened. Okay. But I was hyped on that part. I like that part. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them. I like my cable section. Which is Black Keys, right? For first or second? Uh, second. I think it's the second. No, it's like Soul Kitchen for the first one. And then it's uh, Jack White. That's what it is. Jack White. Black okay. Bat Liquor. Yep, 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 yep. It's that oh. bad, bad licorice. Yeah, Jack White is the goat. Dude. And it, oh, the editing to the to the song in that second uh, that second song is. Thank you. Very yeah, good. I'm hyped on that part. I'm not so hyped on my second movie part, but then hyped on my third movie part again. All right, we'll get into the, we'll get into the next Sorry. two. Uh, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, any help from sponsors for this first movie? Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's um, you know, people always talk about um how everyone like just loses money on their wakeboard movies and stuff. Bro, we made money. I paid my I paid riders always. Every every movie I paid everyone that had a full part in the movie. From from the sponsors that we would get to host their logo in the beginning and end and stuff. And then like first movie we sold online for pay what you want, a dollar and above. And it did pretty sick. I like, paid six sixty nine. Sick. Thank you. Yeah. I was Seriously. <laughs> thank you. You know, you I remember that. Yeah, I remember you that. You got a fuck ton of dollars. Like literally like one dollars, but we got a lot of like hundred dollars. You know what I mean? People yeah. showing love and And they're in a position to be able to do so. Which yeah. is sick. And I took I took all the money and divided it up and you pay the people that have full parts. Yeah. And it was sick. And I always loved doing that. I thought it was the sickest, like, you know, that's a sick vibe. It seems to me like there is a misconception on the whole movie thing where they're like, this is just a, it's just a money dump. Well, I think, yeah, I think people just take it too seriously that they need the best of the best. And it needs to be this thing that you sell on iTunes. And it's like, it's like insane production. And then, I mean, that's cool too. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't make a formats yeah. like that level of production is better than ours, but it's like, vibe. but that doesn't mean we can't make a movie. You know what I'm saying? Like dust box. Hello. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you have <laughs> every, everyone has their place. Like everyone, anyone can make a movie. You know yeah. what I mean? You just got to do it your own way. That fits your style and your means. Yeah. And if it's dope, no one really cares. Like, they'll watch it. They'll watch it and they probably will give you some coin And just support. cut the fat. <laughs> oh, we'll get into some fat. Cut the fat <laughs> and then like and then do it again and again and again and again and just make sure you're not flooding people's eyes with with just the same brick ledge point, over and point. over and over again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. We talk about uh, that. This. All right. So on on a serious note with the uh, support from creating a movie because what what we did with tape was we had a physical object that represented what we filmed it on yeah sold it with a mag yeah and had premieres that we sold it at people bought it we shipped it out yeah i'd have to talk to dylan meat on this but i think we at least cleared some money on it yeah so yeah and obviously you're not accounting all the expenses of food when you're at a winch spot and gas no whatever that's because that's not expensive that's that that's living yeah it's living exactly you're going to be doing that for you're fun You're going to be doing that anyway. Like, you're going to be sitting on your couch. It's like, Brett still got to eat. Like, I might as well be in the trenches and buying food and yeah. filming and having fun with my boys. Like, that's not even an expense, I don't bro. think you take that into account. That's living, dude. Yeah. And that's good living. Like, that's fun. Those memories, like... Last a lifetime, dude. That's what you want to do. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, 
I'm sure y'all cleared some. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm basically just and trying I think, to I think Dylan got some sponsor he did he get some sponsorship money from like Slingshot or somebody? Uh, for tape, I don't think I don't know. Oh, what's up, Penny? Well y'all were kinda oh my I don't th- y'all were still like getting established and stuff at that time. Yeah, I mean there wasn't anything deserved. But I, I'm just saying that at a, at a at a bigger point is if you're trying to do something like this on your own, there's a path, and it's probably not as hard as you think to do it for like, you know, I mean, at least clear it. You, it's, can, you can clear it. I mean, it's hard, I guess, but if it's what you're trying to do, then it's not hard. You know what I mean? Because it's just it's just a passion project at that point. This yeah. is this is where I want to be. This is what I want to be doing. So, like, why is it hard yeah. to do? Absolutely. I want to be in the trenches. I want to get clips. Like, best times of my life. It's sick. It's so sick, you know? I think it's a good time to talk about a baby. Baby? Because we got a baby peeking in right now. Cue baby. And a mama. So, hey, I think mama. you bring, bring him on in. We got Bill and Lil Bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Penny, don't knock over one of those tripods. That'd be that'd be brutal. You look pretty chill right now, though. She's chill. So we got int- introduce the uh, in the, the baby here, Wes. <laughs> I just came up with the nickname Lil Bill, and I'm pretty hyped. <laughs> Lil Bill, not Kill Bill. Lil, Lil Bill. Lil Bill. So yeah, this is Zeph Jacobson, little fresh boy, dude. So how'd that happen? We had sex. <laughs> I mean, come on. How'd the uh, how'd the whole situation go? Because this this little guy's pretty fresh, huh? So fresh. Two and a half months. Um, it was great. I mean, I mean, ups and downs for sure. Your life is changing and stuff. And, I mean, it really changes once the baby comes out. But, I don't know. It's the sickest, you know? It's going to be the sickest. You give life and then you can, like, shape a human to hopefully be a dope one. And I'm hyped on that challenge, you know? So I got a couple questions on Zef before we let him go back and eat and see probably he's, what he he's wants probably to probably gonna, do. he's like, oh, these bright lights, dude. What's his, uh, what's his first word gonna be? What's Zef's first word gonna be? <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> I do not know. We're just gonna have to wait and see. Probably Brett. <laughs> or something dumb like that. Whatever you say a lot, around him a lot. Yeah, he can be like, like, hey, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, yeah. Uh, on a serious note, do you have any plans? I mean, to get him into wakeboarding when no. he grows up, just let no. him do his own thing, kind of yeah, expose him to sure. a lot. But like from my experience with watching my brother's kids grow up and stuff, like your kids are into what you're into. If you have passion, the kids follow that pretty closely. Like, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure this dude's going to be into disc golf and wakeboarding. And like drawing, probably sewing. I do that around him a lot. And hopefully he's a creator. I mean, that's all I could ask for. I don't care what he's creating, but as long as you're using that part of your brain, I feel like that's always been the most important thing in my life, like creating whatever it is. Well, he's 50% you, 50% Cena. You guys both create a lot of stuff. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, yeah. And I mean, shout out Bill. She's the best mom ever. And, she crushed it during pregnancy and stuff, and now we got him, dude. He's gonna make me cry. It's weird, like talking about it, like it's like sharing this with other people. But yeah, it's amazing. It's dude. sick, dude. It's yeah. awesome. It's you create another human life. I mean, it doesn't get any cooler than that. And now Bill's getting back on the water, and she's starting to shred again. And so we're making time, and you know, we're we're splitting up babysitting times with the kid, and so we can do our thing and still have that creativity, you know, and get our get our work times in and our shred times in and luckily he's pretty chill at the park he sleeps in his uh stroller pretty good so we'll just rock up to the park and like just leave him on the start dock and go ride because there's like homies there yeah you know what i mean like that sounds bad on paper but it's no, not absolutely not it's not oh yeah then we go ride and then it's tight dude and big can, chilling dude yeah he's got so many uncles and sick people around him that i mean what You're gonna could, be all right Zach. what could go wrong dude <laughs> I think it's gonna be fine, dude. Yeah, and he's sick. I'm hyped. I'm hyped to do stuff with him in the future. I love it. That's awesome. It's gonna be beautiful. And thank you so much, Hunter, for having us. Like we're staying at Hunter's house and brought a dog and a kid, a baby. They're the chillest dog and kid though, so that's kind of a layup for me. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, but, yeah. but thank you. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Anything you want to say to the uh, mic, Zeph? Anything you got on the top of your head right now? 
He's got hair up there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There you go. I totally agree. Tindy, the worst. I couldn't agree more. He might have just pooped. <laughs> He's like, stink bug. He's like, stink bug in here, stink baby. Stink bug. Dude, what is stink bug? I think I looked it up, but I want to know from your brain, like, what is, what is grabbing stink bug? Here, we'll get the baby out of here in a second. A little you. guest appearance. I love you, baby. Bye. Make sure you sign that release. I forgot to put those clips out there. <laughs> Bye, little Bill. <laughs> stink bug is when you grab just straight down. Okay. So it's you're not going around the knee into you're going straight. Like, knees are going out. You know, I grab stink bug. You don't grab, so you're all right. I know, but if I did, <laughs> uh, okay. So let's let's dive back into Coalition Volume One. I got a couple specific clips I want to kind of. Think sick. Yeah, Mini HVX. That's the uh, video grass movies. All of them up until 2018, maybe. No way. Yep. Whoa. Sick, right? So I love those little physical sick, things. That, yeah. Right. Yeah, because we did the VHS tapes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the covers, and then it had a little uh little disc drive in there. Yeah, a little USB stick, mm-hmm. and I was like, this that's tight. it's cool, dude. Yeah. You you create a physical thing, it's like a great something merger. tangible, dude. Yeah. Like look, <clears throat> holding it, <laughs> it's real. <laughs> it's not likes and comments on the internet. Yeah. Um. But yeah, let's dive into some some clips. Coalition Volume One. Yeah. Kind of going back in the archives a little bit, but yeah, sick. Let's chat. Dude. Dry start to down rail. You know what I'm talking about? Concrete pallet. Down bar, water. Yeah. Look kind of sketchy. With like the triple threat. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's where I, that's where I broke my ankle. I was that's tr- in the teaser or in the opening kind nah. of mashup? Where nah, you- that was Quinn's fall from there. I don't think my fall is uh, even in there. Okay. I don't think it ever saw light. How'd you break it? Uh, I was trying to go rail to rail. Oh, yeah. That definitely wasn't it then. No, it wasn't in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I like got my hit. I just did like 50, back one, switch 50, like real quick, like... um. And then I was like, I think I can go to rail. I think I can go rail to rail because this other rail's right there. You yeah. know what I mean? I just got to fucking get on it. And we were just trying to, it was like every pull, I was like slowing down the winch, which is kind of like. To have a little more time on the rail to get to the next Yes, okay. exactly. To like go pallet to the rail and push over. And then something happened. I just, I don't know. I just like slipped off and then like hit the upright of the la- the one I was trying to go to. You know what I mean? I, like, didn't yep. get there and hit the upright and just, like, squanched my ankle super bad. But then never got it fixed or anything. It's, like, chill. You get a brace on it for a little bit? Then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've gone, like, in and out. of. I, like, wore braces for a little while, and it just hurt more with the brace and wakeboarding, being in a boot and stuff, that I just kind of – it's just a it's just a little stiff ankle. Yeah, I just it's feel fine. like, I mean, the bigger guys, I got some ankle things going on. I, I don't get it checked out. I don't know. It's just I'm life. Right. It's just I'm life, right. dude. I'm like, right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cinch the boot down a little bit extra today. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Yeah. So dry starts, though. You get it. Yeah, dry starts. So Thoughts on the dry start in get general. It. And explain what it is for the layman's. Um, you're not lame if you don't know what a dry start is. I think layman means like you don't know. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, you're not God. privy to the information. Oh, okay, so. Cool. What learn, is it? Learn something new every day, right? There you go. Um, so a dry start is just when there's not water up top. Traditionally, wakeboarders would build a pool to hit this down rail that has a lake at the bottom of it. Um, we didn't have access to the materials or time or really want to build a pool. So we're just like, and, and we come from Valdosta where we slide concrete and grass and sand. And then you realize that you, if you just lean back, you can slide pretty much anything, dude. So then we're like, let's just try it. And it works. And it's not ideal. But, you know, it's funny how it's such a hot topic, right? But it's like, why do you, why do you even care? It's like, yeah, we did dry starts. If you don't want to do dry starts, like, guess what, dude? You don't have to do dry starts. <laughs> It's like, I really don't get that part about people. It's like, they just want to, I don't know. But yeah, we just did it out of necessity. We're on these winch trips that we're like trying to film this movie and stuff. So it's like, we're on a winch trip for a week or two weeks or whatever it is. Like we're trying to, we're trying to push P and get clips. That's what we're trying to do every day. We're trying to get as many clips as possible. And it's like, if you're in a city 
and this is your city you're in and you keep running into dead ends and can't find a good spot. You find almost good spots. Well, you do find good spots. They just don't have water at the top of them. Yeah. Damn, it'd be sick if there was a pond here to this down rail into a lake, but there's not, dude. And we don't have other promising spots to go to. So it, it was just born out of necessity. And we just, and you can hit a lot more spots with that mentality. And I know it doesn't look the best and whatever, like we didn't care we just want these clips dude and but some of them were sick some of them are really sick dude. yeah you some know what i mean gnarly. like it's not like... all of them are that great or whatever but like who cares we're just out here getting these clips and if it turns up shit and we get better clips then we'll just dump that one and use the better one or whatever but like today we're getting clips Winching time isn't a luxury, so you can't spend no ninety percent of your time driving around looking for the perfect spot. You're gonna no. gotta you, you gotta jam. It we in. gotta hit a spot today, yeah, or or else this day is just wasted, you know. Yeah, and it's five o'clock. We only have three hours left. We don't have time to run to another spot, check it, and see if we can run a mission. You know what I mean? So yeah, dry pulls, and it was sick. No regrets, dude. I don't think there should be any because I think that you eliminate a lot of spots if you. Eliminate the dry start. And and the pool, I'm not going to be building the pool. And a lot trust of me, I am never looking for dry starts. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just come about. That is like never the goal, you know? Well, because it's you're like, never like, oh, I really want to just stand ooh, I on. just want to slide over this dry-ass concrete <laughs> and just like run into a pallet. <laughs> it's like, Dung. yeah, hell no, dude, on a winch. It's like, nah, it's not ideal, but it works. And uh, we did it. And yeah. it was sick. I love it. Got a lot of good clips yeah, throughout the for years. sure. So, Ender, hard way front two, switch back clip. How many tries was that? Damn, that one was crazy, right? Yeah. Like, it's not even that clean either. It's just crazy looking. Like, I don't know. Not that many. Okay. I think. Because we had session the spot. I really don't think it was a lot. I don't remember even taking... Uh, uh, remember, or uh, uh, what's the word? A memorable fall because we'd session that spot a lot, so I was pretty versed on the, the run in and the gap out and mm -hmm. the ledge and everything sliding good. And I think that's why my face is so so astonished at the end. And Pratt's like, Oh my god, that's why I was asking, you know, because I think it just happened and I just. I mean, I just ollied, you know, and I'd done front lips on it because I did front lip pretzel yep. on it. And so I just like ollied, just whipped and prayed. And then it, and then the pullback's like so sick. The too. pullback's sick. That's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. But it's not like I even ride away that clean. Like I kind of land and the winch dumps and then I'm just in the rocks and just like, <laughs> I'm here. I think I did it, you know, like, but yeah hyped on that clip for sure okay i was wondering and just pratt's reactions just i wasn't sure if it was a long battle or not but no nah, it wasn't i don't think so i think that's why i was just so shocked got her done got her done uh how, what was the reception like to that movie when it came out <sighs> like what people think of it yeah it was great it was great was it more maybe than you i mean i i guess do you go into filming a movie expecting a certain reaction especially the first one or was it just like we're stoked on this we're gonna put it out let's see what happens it was great I think just all around great, like no really bad vibes. I think um, Taylor Hanley, who did formats, he said to me, he was like blown away by it. And he said, um, under hyped and over delivered. And I'll never the forget. highest of compliments. I'll never forget that. You know, I was like, damn, like that sounds really sick when you say it. <laughs> Yeah. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Just like that. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. Love it. It was great. And then it was like, yeah. And then wait a little while and do our thing and film some other stuff. And then it's like, let's do another movie, you know? Yeah. Love it. So I got a, I got a Patreon question from Ben Svoboda. I'm, I think I'm saying that right. Probably not. Hit me. Svoboda. Uh, how long should a crew film before dropping a full length movie? And I feel like this is a totally dependent answer but i'm wondering what your answer is yeah i think it's all subjective yeah. you know for sure i think a good i think your your starting point is one year ish 
Why is that? Do you think? Well, I think it. I think it matches up with the timeline of. You know, you talked about this, and I think I think in in your pod, and it really hit me, and it really lines up. I never thought about all the snowboard movies coming out at the same time and when they drop and in in relation to their season. And I really thought about that and I was like, damn, I think it's so right. And you should drop it in the spring at the beginning of our season. Cause that's when hype is building the most for our wakeboard season. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's kind of like that. I think that's like your starting point of like, if you're filming, you should film all year and then drop it in the next spring. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you have a crew who's really fucking bout it, then you film all year and drop it in the spring. And then you film all year and drop it in the spring. Like, if you're just a full crew, a full movie crew, that would be a good formula. And I think there is a couple more reasons other than just dropping in the spring, which is the time that wakeboarding is building hype and the season's getting started. Yeah. The second reason, and arguably a more important reason, is that you're sitting on these clips for a long time and you get to watch them over and over and really, truly let the good stuff rise to the top yeah. and get rid of the bad stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not going to do that in the moment. If you turn that thing around in a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Yeah, and that's what that's what I'm saying. you got to give it time to breathe because you need to film a lot more clips than you're going to use. Yeah. Well, if you want to film a good movie. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can film a shitty movie, too. I don't care. I'll still probably watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely watch it. That's just nature of the beast here is what you're looking at. But yeah, I, 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 it'd be a much better path to go down of. Yeah, for sure. Wait a little bit. Get as many clips as you can. And, But I think it's just hard to film full movies and wakeboarding. I mean, skating's skating's the easiest. They just skate. There's not that much prep at spots. And I know they still prep spots and stuff. You ain't dropping a kicker off a six-foot drop. But it's not like yeah, wakeboarding. It's, yeah. it's not like winching. Um, then snowboarding's next. They got a lot of shoveling to do. And snow conditions can be shit. You, you know, can't right? sleep on the shoveling. That's a lot of work. Yeah. And they talk about it a lot. They're shoveling. And you got to shovel off some stairs, apparently, too. And they're prepping and everything. But yeah. I think wakeboarding's got a tourist, dude. It's no, they hard. Do. They do. Because, dude, you got a winch that is a mandatory thing you got to do. Yeah. You got to kick her a lot of times. It's hard. It's it's tough. You got to have a dedicated crew. Yeah. And that's hard to come by. Plus, winter, it's cold. Not a lot of people are really I love to winching in the winter. <laughs> you mean wakeboard winching? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're talking about snowboarding? I was just saying snowboarding in the winter. No one's got going to put on their gear to go kick you out. They're oh, like, yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Those yeah. guys are having fun. Yeah, whatever. But wakeboarding, it's like it's it's a lot easier to get kicked out. Cause it's, For sure. Now it's less because of the electric winch, but you got a gas winch at a freaking public area yeah. and business. It's, it's, it's loud. Well, now it's quieter. Yeah, helps a lot. It so, does, honestly. Yeah. It really does. Be sneaky. Yeah. Get some high vis. You're good For to sure. go. Uh, For Coalition sure. Volume 2. So why film another one? Why not? It's a lot of work. It's not. You're just living, dude. That's what we want to do. It's a lot of work when it's a lot of work when I got to edit it and I disappear for a month. And, I, you know, that's a lot of work. Yeah. That feels like work. Kind of. But the rest of it, not so much. You're on adventures with your friends, dude. Yeah. That's what you want to do. It's like being a child again. Yes. Like, did it feel like work when you were in trenches with ZMT? Yes and no. Well, yeah, of yeah. course you got to haul the kicker but, and but stuff. In the, in the grand sense, no. It's like you got to. You have to work. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not like you have to work, but it doesn't. It's it's not like work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. All right. So great reception from the first one. We're running it back, right on baby. The, yeah. Culture, run it back. Industry, we all need run this, it back. We Why love not? doing this. Yeah. We got, and we got the hype. You know what I mean? Coalition, Space Mob, all that shit. We got hype. Iron's keep hot, going. keep striking. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. So, cut up boards on the two tower system where you, you like you said, it's like a firecracker type situation. Yeah. Where'd you get that idea from? Love that rail. Oh, that my just, God. One day thinking around and like, we got some boards Fuck, laying around. dude. It worked so good, too. Yeah, it did. You wouldn't believe how it felt, too. It felt like you were on a cloud, and it was just like, oh, my God. 
Yeah, that rail was so tight, dude. I don't know. Just from just from the bollard rail mentality, I think. Maybe we got boards, similar thing. Yeah, you know you know you can just skim across this thing. It's like Dude, I just be thinking though, like, like so many, so many wakeboarders, like their power is their their power, their tricks, their. I went back four under the rail. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like that's not my power, dude. My power is my mind, and just I like can't turn it off. Like every night before I go to sleep, I'm thinking about wakeboarding, like dead ass serious. That's like. It's kind of my trick of how I put myself to sleep also is I just let my mind run into wakeboard tricks and try to think of a new one. Try to think of a new drag and snap or little thing and like or a or a new rail or like something like that. Finding some peace in that. Yeah, and that's and that's how I let and that's how I let my mind drift off to sleep every night. See, I just get more and more worked up when I start thinking about that stuff at night. Maybe I haven't crossed the barrier yet. I just, just I just it. love it, dude. Like I really love it. I love, I love trying to come up with new stuff. And I got, and I can too. Like I got an idea right now in my head that I'm gonna do. I just searched Facebook Marketplace because I'm down in Orlando and I found the thing I need. I heard about it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be sick. And I'm like, yep. yes, I'm gonna do it. Talk to Quinn. I was like, we're gonna do it yard sale five or six and it's gonna be sick and it's like i i can't stop i mean it's just like the thing like ever since i was a kid i just want to create i want to create things whatever it is whether i'm sewing or trying to make sheet music <laughs> we'll like, get into the rapping in a minute here or like you know what i'm saying just just creating is my thing and i'll never stop doing it what's up let's go so 50 50 chain in argentina that's pretty sick how'd that feel rusty looked rusty so rusty but so sick dude crazy story about that is the crew in argentina we're like dude oh god argentina this podcast is gonna be long dude yeah we took a break and yeah but whatever like there's a lot to talk about yeah that's cool i guess so chain was sick. So we're in Argentina and we went through hell, absolute hell in Argentina to try to winch there. Like if you're trying to film a movie and you want to go winch, do not go to Argentina. I will say that. If you want to go to Argentina and have a great time and go to cables and party and just live it, go to Argentina. Do not go to Argentina and try to film a movie. I will say that. But it's like we never even got our winches, dude. We brought two brand new leader winches, shipped them with uh, us on the plane, like brought them to the airport and everything was good until like we were literally about to walk out the door of the airport in Argentina. And then it was like, hold up. And then they just seized them. And then we never got them. We worked <clears throat> pretty much the entire time we're in Argentina. We're trying to get our winches out of customs and just never got them so we're like working with just like the most busted ass winches that we could rummage up in argentina and like off to a bad start that so bad dude so bad i remember crying the day that we found out that we're fucked like we're not getting the winches like you're dead you're not getting these winches they're going back to the u.s whenever you come and fly back out and I just, like, could not control. I, I just, like, started crying out of nowhere. And it was, like, insane emotion. Because it was, like, we had we felt like we had so much riding on that. Because it was, like, we had the hype from the first movie. We're going to film the second movie. And it's got to be better than the first movie. You yeah. know what I mean? And Slingshot helped us out with a lot of that bill of getting over there and stuff. So it's, like, we feel obligated to do our absolute best for them. And Jeff and Sh show up show out you know but it was just hard but i mean we got we got a winch and we did what we could and we found the spots that we found and we traveled a fuck ton of miles to get those spots well it's kilometers down there whatever <laughs> dude no we traveled miles dude oh uh, but yeah the winch spot um the chain was insane dude and they 
they sh- we mm-hmm. i think quinn found the spot on google maps or something he always lurking oh yeah he's the goat at that quinn found the spot we show it to our homies the acid winch crew and they're like nah 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 it's not really a spot like we we've been there it's it's not a spot and we're like we're in the land of no spots and this thing looks um if it's half as good as it looks on google google maps like we're we're at least going to check this fucking thing out and then we show up and it you know it is what it is it's a massive chain strung super tight like just an incline rail and it was like uh this is the sickest one spot ever like fuck yeah we're hitting it and we sessioned it all day and got crazy clips like dairy front lipped it like front cell li- phone front lip pretzeled it dude and like quinn like probably he he backboard same weighed it and it was so crazy it's a spot it's a spot <laughs> <laughs> it's a great spot it's so good dude okay we'll uh we'll we'll breeze through volume two we'll go to the trilogy third one trilogy third installation um you filmed quite a bit of this movie in europe and i'm i'm very curious the you know spot selection attitude towards winching just just compare and contrast winching in europe to winching in the u.s night and day (laughs) you look surprised i just want to hear more night and day for sure winching in europe was phenomenal we only had one instance where we, we just pissed off some people but we were winching in a botanical garden that was yeah. that was our bad. That's, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can't be fucking with the plants. That was our bad for sure. But you know the thing about Europe is is the U.S. is massive, dude. And we're so used to driving five hours to a spot or something dumb. Over there, it's like if you drive five hours straight, like you're across Germany. You just went across the whole country. You know what I mean? So then you have cities within that, and you have major cities within, like, an hour of each other, and you have spots in those cities. So everything is everything is more condensed. And, like, that's just in Germany. You know, you talk about the Netherlands and opportunity there and stuff. It's, like, it's just insane. And the sculpture winch is the best. It is. It is. All right. It's the best. Well, I just feel a little bit like, you know, because we ride for Moto Winch, and they hook us up, and, like, shout out Moto Winch. That thing is a – it's a beast, you know? Lasts forever. Has way more than enough power, and, like, it's it's money. The only thing – the only thing Sculpture has that Moto doesn't is, like, the case that the Sculpture comes in – and the speed control that you set on the box and then it's set and the simplicity of the driving that sculpture has. Does sculpture still do the battery situation where they're the, they're the same as the drill batteries and stuff? No. They don't do that anymore? No. I okay. think they ran into something with Bosch or something. Yeah, where they okay. couldn't, they couldn't, I, that's, that was pretty sick. Yes. Seemed insanely like sick. Yeah. But now they just have these RC batteries pretty much. Like the same thing. Same as Rewinch. Whatever. Yeah. It works, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, the Bosch batteries were sick. You can use them in your drill and stuff and it's a it's a good sell but yeah. like do we need it nah does the winch run yes that's the most important part yeah. you got like electricity running that motor you're yeah. all right um that wall ride spot so kind of a dream spot dream like not ideal landing though not a dream spot she's shallow shallow we me and bill spent like three hours moving rocks not only moving rocks out of the landing but building a wall to raise the water damn it up yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a mish. You take any slams on that or? Yeah. One of, one of the first, first attempts, I kind of like landed and bounced and then just put my hand like fell and just like took like a decent chunk out of my hand, just like on a rock or something. But that was kind of, I mean, I fell, but all the prep work we did for that spot made it hittable. But the reason why I didn't do, like, a real trick on it was because it was so just spinning into it and taking the really, like, landing and then falling, you know what I mean? Which happens when you're trying to spin on a winch and shit. 
that like I would be falling like almost on the rock dam that we built. So like it spinning into it would have been really gnarly. But on that note, I want to go back to it and spin into it and just have try to get a little bit of crew. I want to fucking spend dammer up a little more. Dammer up a little bit more and fucking get some tricks down this thing, dude, because it's like look at this spot. Beautiful. Even if we have to spend all day and Worth come it. back the next day to hit it because we're cooked whatever dude and it was like kind of down in this little thing like you're chilling you're just, chilling it just looked great looked like it felt great. thank you it it's, was incredible and i love the clip and because i had a kit like when we first started the session it was just too fast too fast too fast because it's like i'm coming at this thing and it's like no <laughs> <laughs> i'm about to land on the rock like i need to be going slow so i can just kind of drop in pop and plop you yeah. know um but I love the clip of me brake checking coming out of the tunnel, like for the ah, oh, love that. Yeah, it was kind of like I felt like snowboard vibes. Looked like know? it. Yeah, love it. Uh, up and back on the waterfall. So this fuck was going on there. What is it? The waterfall, huge waterfall. You go up, it's like you kind of come back. The line pops. Oh off my something. god! Just crazy. Just oh, you could never recreate it. Never. The fucking. The carabiner broke, dude. So it's like the plan, the plan was to do what I did, but the winch just cuts off and I coast down with the handle. But it doesn't really work that well because you still have the resistance of the winch. Like it just didn't, I don't know. Well, I don't really know. I didn't try it that many times. It was like, it's like not really working, not really working. It was just an idea. And then this one time, I just like pop. Whoever's driving the winch didn't cut it, like, I guess on time. And it like lifts me and I like kind of swing <laughs> for a second. And then the carabiner breaks from my fat ass hanging from it. And then I just cruise down and I still got the handle in my hand. And I'm just like, Ah, like what just happened, dude? And then we got kicked out shortly after. I didn't know that was uh not. I, I wasn't sure what was going on. Like with it the was rope planned, there. but like never like how it happened. Yeah, and how it happened made it better than it ever could have been. Yeah. anyway, you know, because it like I like I like got some air at the top of that thing, <laughs> and it was not easy to like. We got WMJ airborne. Then it happened every day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was crazy. Super hyped on that one. Just a funky little one that you you can't recreate. It just happened, and we we're like, and I was done after that because it was like I it, I was like, what? Like I didn't know what happened. You know what I mean? Like I just like what happened, and you know, checked the tape, and I was like, damn, that was crazy. It looks insane. Like I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Who's next? Like that was awesome. You know, you gotta stay on your toes. It's a lesson to always stay on your toes. You yeah. never know what might happen. Take take what take what's given. Something I don't know. So any plans for another movie? So I don't know what the plan is. I want to film another movie. But I think it's going to be more... Because our last movie took three years to film. The trilogy. Because it was we're committed to all winching. And winching is hard. And it takes time. And it takes crew. And it's... It's hard. <laughs> takes time. So I don't know if we're going to do like more. I want to, I see myself like we were talking the other night, like bust them over the head with a 15 minute movie. You know what I mean? Cause I honestly, when I'm scrolling YouTube and looking for a snowboard movie to watch, I'm kind of clicking on those 15, 20 minute bangers more than I am. If it says 50, I'm like, Ooh, that marketing been a bit better been real good for that's that 50 a, minutes. That's a commitment, yeah. you know? Um, and our last movie was 50, 55 or something, which I was blown away, but it was like, but when I re when I rewatch the trilogy, it moves though. It doesn't really get that stale. So I'm hyped on that, but yeah, I think I want to make movies from trips, I think, you know? Yeah. With even with even different people not saying not with these people but with these people also if you're in a spot and these people are down yeah just like yeah just 
plan things with sponsors who want to get involved and do something unique and stuff and make make 15 minute movies from specific trips because then i think it's i think it'll be almost cooler vibe to like you're on this trip for one month and you're we're making a movie right now so you're filming everything you're partying you're getting clips in the streets and I think the vibe could come together even more. Yeah, and they could each tell their own story. You know what I mean? Which is cool. And then you don't know what it's going to look like. It's just going to happen, which, like we talked about things being organic, that's when they hit. So I think that'd be cool. That's my plan. All right. So that's kind of a little glimpse in the future. Yeah, so I don't know, but... uh, Nothing set in stone. We got some ideas. We ain't done. (laughs) (laughs) So I got a uh, message from none other than Quinn Silvernail. and he's 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 got a few questions. Um, so we'll go ahead and listen to this and then we can kind of run through them. Okay. So what's good grab matters, fam listeners, Wesley, this is your boy Quinn just calling in to get a couple questions into WMJ. Uh, seeing that we have spent a ton of time together Thanks. filming these coalition volumes. We got 10 now, 11's in the oven, three full length videos that we have traveled around and spent a ton of time in the streets together on going to battle with each other. What is your most memorable battle for a trick? So the longest, hardest battle that you've had for a trick that you've gotten, as well as what is the longest, hardest spot battle that you've been a part of on the other side of things where someone's trying to get a trick and you're filming or driving and uh, just basically supporting them to make sure they get the clip. And then on the other side of that, she what is going. the most ready you have been for battle and actually got your trick super quickly, either one and done or relatively fast to where you were surprised yourself and as well as what is the most ready for battle you have been for somebody else to do a trick to where you thought it was going to take all day and they ended up getting the trick either one and done or very fast and we all got to go eat so that's my four questions and, uh, i hope you guys are having a good time on the pod can't wait to hear it <laughs> can we get that in text quinn i got we'll it see you soon so yeah quinn hit us with a four-parter so he's not okay. messing around i i got him written down here so we can go one by one Damn. so you can kind of keep fresh in your mind i feel like he's poking at something with that last question so we could go eat and it like didn't hit me let's hit one two three and then we can hit the last one okay. maybe it'll spark okay. some okay. so toughest battle you've had in the streets or maybe in the park but i think he's probably referring to the streets i don't know dude maybe he has something in his head but i don't know it's all right if nothing comes to mind. I'm not a huge battler. Yeah. Honestly. I'm right there with you. I like try to I, I like assess my risk and hype and stuff and like Find I my skill range. I and... kind of feel if this is happening or it's not. And I like I love winching, but I don't like getting hurt winching. And I really pride myself on being able to assess the risk. Surgeon. Yeah. And, and figure out, like, if it's worth it or not. Um, but I, I've definitely been in battles, too, though. I just don't know what he's referring to. I feel like he's got something in his head that I'm not clicking with right now. I think he did. I don't know, though. Defo, right? Yeah, he wouldn't ask it if he did. Yeah, you know? fuck, I'm blowing it. There's a lot of clips. Out. All right, we'll move on to the second one. Toughest battle somebody else has had that you've been there for. Quinn can battle. <laughs> Dude. Uh, oh, well, actually, one, one of my battles um, was on that brick ledge where I was doing, like, front one and then, like, switch nose bonk pretzel. And it was just, like, so short and quick that I definitely, like, battled that landing for a while. But, like, I don't think that's what he's talking about. Okay. But, like, Quinn battles? Bro, Quinn can battle. But he's usually just doing some crazy-ass shit, so it's like, you're here. You know what I mean? We're in it. We're thick. We're getting We this started clip. knowing this was going to be tough. We're getting this yeah. clip, you know? But he always comes through with some insane clips, so it's like, 
doesn't even matter, dude. We're here for you. And that's the greatest. That's one of the sickest things about being in the streets with your boys, dude. You got each other's backs. We're here for it. You know what I mean? You got your clip. You were filming me. Now you're going. I'm filming you. And we're here for it. I ain't got nowhere I need to be. This is where I am. I need to be here, and that's where I'm at. I need to be here, and that's where I'm at. Uh, what's the most surprised you've been while landing a trick? I think that I think that horror boiled, too. Okay. From the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the look on your face kind of tells it. Yeah. So that, that adds up. That makes sense. All right, so the fourth one. I think so. What's the quickest someone else has landed a trick, and then you went to eat after? It's kind of the... See, that's the one I'm really not down about, it. right? Quickest... That sounds like a very specific situation he's bringing up. Oh, Quinn. What is it? Text me. I don't <laughs> know. This isn't live. Yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Should I text him? Or do we text, text him and then maybe we can come back can come to, back to, it. to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, if he responds. <laughs> Give me the answer to part four of your question, Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blanking, dude. Or maybe Quint knows. Quint said I could always call him. Um, that's funny. Well, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. To to be continued. Yeah, and yeah. damn, I feel like a putz for not firing off. I mean, there's, there's I'm been sure a, when he texts you. Like, I know. Ah. There's been a lot of spots, though. Yeah, a lot of spots, a lot of clips. All right, let's uh, power, power rank these five water sports. Boat wakeboarding, shoe skis, wake skating, slalom skiing, cable wakeboarding. Shoe skis. Dopest dope. Number one? Up top? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't really want to do that. You have to. I have to? You have to. <laughs> Same again. Boat wakeboarding, shoe skis, wake skating, slalom skiing, cable wakeboarding. Cable wakeboarding, wake skating, shoe skis. What's the last two? Slalom skiing and boat wakeboarding. Slalom skiing, boat wakeboarding. All right. Since you weren't too hyped on that section, we'll move right on to rapping. Danka. What sparked your interest in making music? <laughs> rapping. Oh. Um, <laughs> sick. Uh, I don't know. Just like, just wanting to try something new, really. That's like really all it boils down to. And, and I've always been a rap head and I just love rap music. I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. I mean, I love all music too. And I know it's a cliche thing to say, but I really do. Like I listen to a lot of like down tempo, like kind of not cool stuff when I'm like drawing and, and stuff like that. Um, like Vance Joy. I love Vance Joy. I think he's like the sickest dude. And, like, you're probably not going to like Vance Joy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I just always like rap. And I just wanted to try something new. That's really it. Okay. Was it tough putting yourself out there at first? Not really, no. Really? Getting in the getting in the studio, putting some stuff down and releasing it? I was really, really nervous going into the studio for the first time. 100%. So nervous. I can't even believe it sounded how it did because how it felt coming out was, felt really shaky and like, I don't know. Really, yeah, I don't know. I was super nervous being in the booth first time. But then after that, I developed a really good relationship with that producer, Malik, from uh, D&D Underground in Spartanburg. And then it just became fun and shit. I loved it. You got that first one out? You yeah. Yeah. Which was, which was like uh, the banger, you know, and everyone loved it. Everyone still loves bangs more than anything, and it's like one of my least favorite songs. <laughs> Is that not how it goes? Like it, always, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I just think that's funny, you know. I don't care. Like, I still back that song. Like, I still got – like, I like some – some words and some verses and some lines I say in that song, but, like, overall, I just think it's, like, cheesy as fuck. Yeah. But, like, whatever. People dig the cheese sometimes, I don't man. care. And, but it's, like, it's just all a balance. I don't want to become a rapper either. You know what I mean? It's, like, I just, like, I just, I like trying new stuff and seeing seeing what works and doesn't and what feels good and what doesn't feel good, you know? And I just want to try it. So is is there I mean. an aspect of, like, just believing that you can do anything and then doing it and you did it? A hundred percent. 
a hundred percent. I mean, I'm, I'm really not like the success is a mindset type Brett, but like do it, you know, just do it, try and try your best, you know, give, give your all. Um, like my mom always said to me, she said, anything worth doing is worth doing good. So it's like, even if you work at fucking Walmart, do your absolute best job you can working at Walmart. And then guess what? In a couple of years, you might manage that Walmart and be making a decent ass salary. You know what I mean? Or like whatever your job is. Yeah. And whatever your whatever you want to do. If that's your passion, you want to do something, just do the absolute best you can and then see what happens. And it might not work. Then do something else. But at least you know that you gave it everything. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's just fun. And I still plan, like I have, fuck, I probably have like 20 songs that are just like done on paper. And I have beats that go to them and I got lyrics to all of them and they're just done, just chilling. They're going to get, they're going to get made or? Yeah, probably. One day? Probably. Whenever I, whenever I like swing back around to that. You know, yeah. Because I'm wakeboarding is like what I what I always want to do. But then besides that, like creative wise, like I just bounce around so much, like making rugs. Like I got this tufting machine. It's like hell yeah, I'm gonna make rugs now. And I did it for like a couple of weeks, and it's like nah, I don't want to make rugs no more. And then it's like I want to sew, and and then I'm like in my sew phase right now. It's like I want to sew, and I'm sewing. I just gave you a hat I sewed and some pants that I sewed and I love working with materials and doing this, but you know, in a, in a month or a week, I might just put it down and be like, I don't want to sew anymore. I want to do this on the side. And I just love, I love bouncing around, you know, and trying different stuff. And I feel like I'll never stop doing that. And maybe, you know, I'm wakeboarding clicked. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be a pro wakeboarder forever. Maybe I'll do something else and maybe I'm figuring it out, some of that out now too and always dipping and dodging and figure out what works and what doesn't, you know? I just love, like like I always said, it's like I just love making shit. Whatever it is, just got to keep making and creating because then you leave your stamp on the world, you know? True. So speaking of creativity, creating, your your wife, Sina, um, you and her run two of the biggest, there, there's not a great word for it, but crews, you know, content, creation stuff in wakeboarding right so how often do you and her bounce ideas off each other is that a regular thing yeah it definitely is but we also work alone too i think in the in the same way um we're definitely bouncing ideas a lot off each other got to right she's there and she's creative so creative and like colors and stuff like She's got colors dialed, dude. Yeah, she does. And she's so in tune with colors and stuff. It's, like, insane. So, like, I'm, like, running in the room, and I got, like, weight pants and, like, three patches. I'm, like, seen it real quick. She's, like, on the phone. I'm, like, real quick, which one? She's, like, that one. I'm, like, thank you. <laughs> and just, like, run back out. And then I'm, <laughs> and then I'm sewing it up because she's just got that dialed. So, yeah, we definitely were always helping each other out with stuff like that. And, yeah, it's great. It's great to be married to someone that just wants to create also because then it's like, well, there's your formula. What are you going to do? You're going to create because you're surrounded by people that want to create. And that's what we want to do, and that's what we're going to do. So Cena runs Copycats Club. Obviously, if you don't follow, follow, subscribe to the mag, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, obviously, being down in the description air horn you gotta get your um, air horn I get, well i gotta get some i can't just rip a freaking air horn i gotta i gotta figure out some sort they of they ripped it yeah maybe true they were the first people with an air horn yeah it's a good point it's a good point right. so how important is what cena has been doing for women's wakeboarding and probably wakeboarding in general i mean it's it's so important obviously But I think, I think, I think the, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like, I think the movies and stuff like that, 
that she's making, I think that's the biggest impact. Because she's showing women what they can do and how badass they can be. Because, like, talk is cheap. You can write it and you can you can post stuff about it and motivational quotes and shit. But you, when you're doing it, that's, like, the realest form of motivation. You're showing these girls that that you can go in the streets with an all-girl winch crew and make a movie. Like, that has never been done. What she did and they killed it dude only girls pounding in stakes for the winch they built the kicker by themselves they're hauling the kicker around they're doing it and all girl winch crew like that's the most badass and motivational thing that she could ever do for women i think in the sport is physically showing these girls how badass they can be love it Hell couldn't yeah. agree more. Sick. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't agree more. Um, all right, let's let's run through your setup. So board size, stance. You got, I mean, you got a couple boards in the uh, quivers. Some would like. Yeah, to I say. bounce. I bounce around. So I mean, which, as I should, you know, it's like you got three boards. It's like you got to bounce around. I'm I'm pretty stuck on this unit right now because I just think it's fun and I love it. But I'm about to get off of it too because I I miss the aspects of the other boards and what they do that this board doesn't do you know what i mean and that's the glory of being so blessed to be with a company like slingshot that's willing to create and and make these boards that do different things and have different aspects and it's not just like this is just a wakeboard and it's like and it that just makes it so much more fun you know but to answer your question right now 165 rover size 12 mob bangers obviously Stance, pretty tight, pretty tight, and like I don't know numbers. Snowboarders really know their numbers, dude. A lot of wakeboarders really know their numbers. Really, I yeah, most people I've talked to, I don't. I, I personally don't. don't. I I put the boots down and just look at them, and then just like find holes that are like really Agreed. really yeah. close to what what it looks like. And then if it feels weird, you come back and do something. Yeah. About it. That's but never I, happened to me. I know, right? <laughs> I've like looked down at my setup and been like, damn, that's fucked up. But I didn't feel it at all. I was like, <laughs> and I guess I'll change it if I can see that it's really bad, but like it doesn't really feel bad. As long as it looks good enough, man, it's good enough yeah. for me. At least. I love this board though. The rover's crazy. And I love how I love that process of going through the, the, the R&D with Slingshot through all these different shapes and then landing on this one that is like, dude, it's so sick. It does everything. It doesn't feel weird to ride it switch anymore. It doesn't feel slicey and dicey on the water. like, But then it still like has a directional feel. And like with the super with the super long nose and like it's so flexy that like when you're doing doing like the the tail drag like same ways and stuff like with like the coalition and like other boards it'll kind of like bite and go down you know what i'm saying it, but like with the melter and the rover because it's got those super like like snowboard tips and they're really soft it doesn't it doesn't like bite and then and then you and then you do the 180 kind of pushes it pushes yeah. exactly it pushes and and lays down and it's like that's the feeling you want when you're doing a trick like that that's some intricacies i think people like to hear that that's, yeah uh, and i feel like yeah yeah and that's why it's like you just got to get you just got to get one if you're if you're about those style tricks it's like you got to get one like pedro like pedro's on that wave hard I'll, and I know it's like he's got his pro model and stuff and he's riding for that brand and he's got the deal and that's awesome but fuck I would love to see Pedro ride a melter with with the tips that are designed to do the tricks that you he'd love to he would he would be he'd be lighting a fire dude it would be insane but yeah if you haven't tried a melter or rover the coalition is just an the the OG banger shape, tried and true, and that I think that's what I'm gonna switch to next is I want to get go some, back to traditional. I want to get some Coley clips because yeah. I love that board. How just 
it is such a good board all around. It can do everything you want it to do. It doesn't have like the specialty tips to where like those specific drag and push tricks don't look as good on the coalition as they do on these things. But it's like, but it does so many other things that I want to experience again, like the effortless pop and stuff and the chind rails that are just like so forgiving and, and you can do different stuff on it because of that. So it's like the, the different boards kind of breed different tricks. So it's like, I want to ride this board to do these tricks. Then I want to ride this board to do these tricks and this board to do these tricks. So it's like, it's a blessing to have that arsenal and like, so crazy to be riding for slingshot because it's like i could not imagine riding for any other brand <laughs> and like the support that they've had for us and not only the support but like the willingness to try new things and always pushing the envelope and and believing in what we have to say and everything and bless up love it sick so let's uh let's talk space tapes oh god so what I mean, what sparked doing an online video contest? Obviously, this is COVID times, but yeah, it was COVID and we couldn't do yard sale. That's what sparked it. We wanted to do something. We were bored as fuck. It was COVID. We couldn't do anything. Everything is everything's locked down and we still wanted to like make our impact. You know what I mean? And I'm not sure exactly where it came from, but it just happened organically. And that's why it was so good. <laughs> so we got a, we got a Patreon question from Garrett Cortez. Um, and, and I know you've, you and I have talked about this a couple of times and I'm sure you've mentioned it before, but how, how big it truly got, um, he's, so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he's asking when you thought it up and started spitballing the idea around, did you ever think it would reach the level that it did? No, absolutely not. And thanks for the question, Garrett. Big shout out. Definitely. I've, sh he shot one of my first articles in Alliance at Trophy Lakes. And I love those. I still love those photos that we got with Garrett. So big shout out. He's such a legend in the game, dude, for photography. Um, so space tapes just happened. It was COVID and it was a perfect storm for sure because everyone's kind of, everyone's stuck in their hometowns with their crews. Like even if you don't have a crew, you're kind of stuck in your place. You can't travel, you know, you're not going to Thailand and you're not, you're not doing these things that you're accustomed to doing in the, whatever time it was i don't know when it was um but it just happened and bob was correct he did uh he did name it uh, i don't think he was there though i think it was over the phone he was on the phone when we were talking about it and it was to my what i remember it was like we were talking about it and trying to figure out this name and this and that and bob had said it like a couple times over the phone and we're like yeah whatever you should bob <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, space tapes, space tapes. And they were like, we were like, wait, what'd you say, Bob? And we were like, he was like, space tapes. And it was like, oh my God, Bob, you're a genius. That is so perfect. And so that's where the name came from. And then we just kept running it up, dude. It was like, it was just an idea. It's like, let's do an online video contest. Why not? Like, let's see what happens. And so we just kind of set it up. We got a couple sponsors and we're like, we were off, off the ground. We knew we had Bob for the production, which is like, a blessing to the sport right now and he needs to be saved and cherished and like topped off <laughs> <laughs> the kid i mean the kid's a gem dude and what he but seriously what he does on the production side is like insane and i hope we can continue to work with you in the future bob but when we started space tapes i remember saying all we need is 10 teams if we can get 10 teams, we have a contest. It's a, it's a dub already. We're having, we we're doing a video contest. That's what we wanted. And then it just spiraled, dude. Spiraled. It was like, we got 10, you know, but then 10 turned into 30 quick. And it was like, unbelievable. Like squads going nuts. It's like, we have 30 teams dudes like insane and then like and then the numbers are starting to go up too because now we got 30 teams and like what was the entry fee was like i don't uh, even remember 250 200 100? yeah i don't know it's kind of hot too what i don't think it was 100 it might have been like 200 or yeah. something i can't remember exactly but like it was kind of hot so like these numbers are starting to go up and then it's like oh shit this is kind of getting big and then it and then i remember just like 
over the time it was just like, bro, we got a 40 and then it was like 50 and then like, and then we hit like 75 teams entered. And then it was just like, oh, it was unbelievable. You know, how did this happen? And we had so much money because we had 75 teams that just paid entry fees. And then we just started farming, dude. Like, well, if we have this, then like we need more money. So we just started like, and everyone was farming. It was like, I mean, Dylan Miller got like access for us for three grand and like Dairy pulled some shit. Quinn pulled some shit. I was pulling. And it was like, we just farmed as much money as possible. Yeah, I'm just looking at the sponsors right now for it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, 72 teams submitted a video. Like 75 entries and 72 followed through. So sick. And we're talking the likes of pro riders to guys you never heard of, probably. Dude, the funniest shit ever, too. Because, like, how dynamic these videos were was just, like, unreal. It'll never... I don't think it could ever be recreated. So that was the second part of his question was... No. What would it take to happen again? I don't want to do it again, personally. I want to do other things that I feel like are more appropriate for this time. But that was that was the most appropriate thing for that time. It just lined up. It was organic. It fell into place. That's why it worked so good. We didn't force space tapes. It just fucking happened. Yeah. And, and boy, did it happen. And how much fun it was watching all those edits with all the boys in Quinn's basement with Bob and heckling bob <laughs> oh my god it was incredible dude oh my god it was insane dude that one clip like damn we ate a couple mushrooms before one of the f before one of the broadcast and that's like probably something a little dicey i shouldn't say but like whatever they're organic we ate a couple not an insane amount we ate a couple mushrooms and, it, like, the live stream will, like, trail a little bit because it's a little bit of, uh, what, latency. And so what we're seeing. And and in the live stream, I'm going like this because my my arms are lagging in what I'm seeing on the TV. So it just looks so trippy of me doing this and then seeing it, like, a split second later on the screen. And then Quinn's like, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> like, come back, dude, come back. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, I mean, dude, that was the best time ever being in that basement and watching all these clips and feeling the love from the wakeboard community that showed up dude and everyone did an insane job on their edits like like even the people that weren't pros that they they still did the best that they could do like i was saying earlier you know what i mean it's like no one just showed up and gave us a shitty edit no one Everyone did the best they could do, and it was so beautiful to watch. And, like, even the wake surfing video that had this, like, funny-ass timeline, and they kind of tried to film it like a, like a little drama episode or something, and it was, like, the funniest shit ever, dude. And, like, thank you to the wakeboard community for doing the best that you could because it made that the the best online contest that I could ever be a part of. And like, no, I don't want to do it again. I have plans on doing space tapes again, but it's not going to be the same thing. Yeah. I really have this idea that I really want to do that. I'm going to try to set up this year and then launch next year. So stay tuned. Well, something I got plans, but like I, I won't. I don't want to do it again because there's no way it'll be that. You can't do it again. That's just the thing. It's just you can't do it again because it. You, you got so lucky with. I mean, there's a lot. Not a lot of luck. A lot of it hard was, work. But there's a lot of luck of just. Dude, dude it was so dumb. Like, you can, it was insane. It was awesome. It was great. Talk about making a, a time that was really shitty to to create a bunch of cool shit. Yeah. In wakeboarding. And boy, people came out of the woodworks and they were winching and getting creative and 
putting together these funny edits or serious edits or just banger edits. And just, we got everything from all ends of the spectrum. And it's like, God, it was sick, dude. Like, thank you, wakeboarding, for doing that. Because, and the most beautiful part about space tapes is it, it will never die. Those edits are all on the YouTube and you can relive it anytime you want. And it's fucking gorgeous. And even all the live streams are up and you can go watch us fool around and me wave my, you can go find that <laughs> clip. Call me out. I do not care. That was awesome. And like, thank you wakeboarding. And thank you to all the sponsors that got behind that and made that happen. Yeah. And being able to pay out to, I think we paid out to six spots. Cause well, that was a ton of prizes too, right? Oh, a ton cool prizes. Yeah. Oh, that's, winch, all sorts yeah, of stuff. absolutely. Yeah. So shout out y'all. You know who you are. Love that. Everybody loves space tapes. Um, we got a uh, Patreon question, kind of shifting gears here. We're going to graphics and and uh, a little bit more artwork stuff. Um, yep. Rich Wheeler is wondering, you've created a number of graphics from the or for Slingshot in the past few years. Is there a favorite graphic among all of the ones you've created? Is there a story behind it? How did it come to be? Yeah, well, we covered this already because the 2018 Coalition is my favorite graphic one. just because it... Just because it's like it has a it has a mystery in it, and it's like a real tangible mystery that you can solve, and like I, I feel like a lot of people haven't solved it, which I think is crazy because if I see some like arbitrary some numbers not, numbers on a board, like I'm gonna try to figure out what that shit means. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I, that one's my favorite, but um, I really loved. I forget what year it was, but when we had the space tomb and the coalition, and they matched up when you put them together. I would like to do something like that again, where it's one picture, but then it's divided up into the boards, but then you put them together and yeah. it kind of makes the picture whole. I like that vibe. It's cool. Yeah. It's very cool. So I'd like to bring that back too. All right. Uh, so we got some, uh, just got some random questions. I mean, we can go through these as slow or as fast as you want to. Okay. Um, how much further can we come when it comes to the difficulty of park rails? Sky's the limit, my dude. Oh my god. <laughs> are we just at the tip of the iceberg? Oh my god, are you kidding me? Like, dude, you can do anything. Literally anything that you can think of. You can dude, you can build oh my god. Endless. Endless. Like effortlessly endless. We're just getting started. Oh my god. Young sport. Oh my god. Yeah. 100 percent, dude get thinking dude get creative you can do whatever you want you just gotta do it oh my god and that's what i'm most excited for is building rails and stuff and like i feel like when i'm old and broken and i can't do the most technical stuff bro i can still crush people with thinking <laughs> <laughs> and building and making making these thoughts and ideas come come to life and and I, and I never really want to start doing that because I feel like I can I can I can do a hard fitty like for a while you could be doing that for a minute I can dude. hard fitty for a while yeah. dude and I just got a hard fitty on some harder stuff and more creative stuff but yeah dude we're, we're just scratching the surface go Love yeah it. uh you're a pretty out outspoken guy when it comes to the uh industry wakeboarding all sorts of stuff do you wish that some more riders maybe would show how they truly feel and let it rip a little bit or be more of a person, me be more of their own personality? I don't know. See, that's that hard thing to say. Cause it's like, not really because it's like, you should just do what you want to do. Like it, I mean, it, it does kind of suck when someone's a little clam and you're like, damn, I wish he would just break out of his shell Cause it'd be so good for him. And we were talking about this and you want that for them, but you can't do that for them. You know what I mean? So what's the point in even thinking about it? True. That's on them. Just control what you can do. And you can try to help them if you're close to them. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like they got to do that for themselves. And I mean, human diversity is beautiful. So like, be you boo boo well said and be you know be proud to be yourself too i i would definitely say that like embrace it embrace it for sure and i've i've, I've come a long way with that 
as well. Like I've definitely gone through a lot of insecure years and being worried about my appearance and stuff. And I don't know how it looked. And then, and then I don't know. I just woke up and I was just like, man, fuck it. Like fuck all that negative energy. And just like you, well, what, what the hell are you going to do about it? Like this is who you are. So like get over it and go. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well said. Thanks. Uh, we got a Patreon question from someone we were ripping with today, Campbell Scarborough. And she's asking, what defines a pro wakeboarder? Put that shit in your Instagram bio and go, <laughs> baby. What's up? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So I, I was, we, this conversation comes up naturally. Um, I would say it comes up a little too much, to be honest, but it, it does come yeah. up. So the clear line, if you were to draw a line, is the obvious one. You got your name on a board. You're a pro wakeboarder. You know, and no one can, if you have your name on a board, I think no one can not call you a pro wakeboarder. Like no one can say you're not a pro wakeboarder if you have your name on a board, right? Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I see where it, I can read. You know where my brain went. Yeah, for sure. Cause you get, then you get these small brands that are homegrown and they're trying to make a name for themselves and then they get the pro model to their homie or whatever and it's yeah, not like you got four units coming out of here it's like but you know what i'm saying if there was saying. a line that's that's where i think yeah, yeah, it would be sure. but then but then the, on the other end of that is like there are so many there are so many homies that don't have their name on a wakeboard that should absolutely be considered pro wakeboarders so I do not know. Yeah. Put that shit in your bio <laughs> and go, baby. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. Like, it's such a weird thing. And I don't know. Does it? And I guess, yeah. Okay. If you get paid, that's a pretty easy one, too. And that, that, that makes the line bigger than just the name on a board. If you get paid, then it makes it your job, right? On paper, you're, you're getting paid to wakeboard, so then that's your job, okay? That's my profession. You could say that, okay, I'm a professional wakeboarder. I get paid. But then the lines of getting paid, that's a that's a blurry tunnel too because you could run up so many different ways of getting paid to, you know, is the influencer who gets paid to post products a professional wakeboarder? But she... You know what I mean? Like Yeah, the YouTube vlogger who can't 360 but yeah, is all but they get paid to wakeboard, so yeah. then are, so I don't even want to talk about that cuz it's dumb. Like Yeah, and I I kind of fall in the same. I mean, I would say the homies no, dude. And and there is a sense And it that doesn't really matter. It doesn't, but I do also think it does to a sense of like you have to this is going to sound really kooky to say, but you have to like protect what a pro wakeboarder yeah. is because yeah. you have to have heroes. I don't you have think to that's the, kooky at all because it it because you, there's got to be a standard. It has to right? be a standard. Right? Yeah. So I agree with that. So, but I do not know where that line stands. Yeah. I don't. I'm a pro weight boarder. I would say that. Yeah. But there, there, there's probably a lot of people that are uh, better at wakeboarding than me that aren't considered pro wakeboarders too. For sure. You know. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I don't pretty. Know. I'm pretty good at what I do. And I'm pretty good at marketing myself. I'm pretty good at editing, and I'm pretty good at thinking of unique setups. And but still hold your riding to a certain standard. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I, don't I know. mean, sometimes I'll be ripping. I'm like, I was ripping today. You yeah. know, I got a lot of tricks done. I felt good. I mean, there are days where I was like, I didn't really feel like I was ripping today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those days, dude. Yeah, for sure. So you know, it, it is a good question, Campbell. And, and yeah, no, absolutely, it's a good question. Yeah. I just don't have a good answer. Yeah, and I don't think a lot of people do. I mean, and I really like to have good answers, but I just don't for that one. That one, <laughs> that one is that one's a muddy. I think I think I got one that you'd have a good answer for. Well, salt. If a company like Red Bull sponsored you, what would you be capable of, <laughs> bro? So much you have no idea. Red Bull's like. I mean, it's always been the, it's always, it's like kind of the dream for everybody, right? They're the dream sponsor. They're the ones that put the most back into their sports and they back their athletes like a hundred P they got, they got the athlete centers. Like you get hurt, they fix you and shit, which is crazy. 
And oh my god, what a, what would I do if I had Red Bull? Like you you don't even know, bro. With with all these ideas and and materials and and you give me budget to actually do this stuff, like dude, we would make magic. But it'll never happen because I'm not that guy. I'm not I'm not a Red Bull guy. They have they they have Red Bull people. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. They're the Red Bull people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're the chosen ones. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not I peg you as more of like an amp energy kind of guy. Dude, right? (laughs) Yo, you got it in. Maybe even a Mountain Dew guy, dude. I could see you as a Mountain Dew guy. I think I sent an email to Mountain Dew one time. I could. Sean Murray was doing something with Mountain Dew this last summer, dude. He might be dipping in a little bit. I'm just saying. I spent so much time on this Coca-Cola athlete. Uh application one time yeah i didn't know that yeah there's like there's a form for it i did it yeah i got sponsored (laughs) that would have been sick i know right (laughs) i know but yeah dude red bull would be sick but it'll never happen and you can't ask you just have to be chosen like you said like and then you just got to be like yeah go 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 (laughs) (laughs) uh let's do a quick two worst trend and best trend in wakeboarding that you see Damn, I, I want to steal Bills because we talked about this, but she's got one All right. that I'm not going to do. But I agree. To when you hear Billy's, you'll endorse I, it. I agree. I, yeah. Okay. I'll stamp. I'll stamp <laughs> what that girl said. Um, I think Instagram right now and just quick drops, quick drops, quick drop, quick, quick drop clips. Quick drops with nothing else. Yeah. And even though I, I'm... I'm at fault too because I enjoy it too, and I also like getting a thousand likes and a hundred comments. And I ain't gonna lie, it feels good. But then, then you just like you lose focus on on doing the bigger projects, which I feel like is so important. So I think like and and Instagram's just so toxic right now that I feel like that is a really bad trend. I mean, it's a bad trend with humanity. Honestly. I think, yeah, it's a bigger. But like, let's not even, you know, we wait, we wakeboard. But it's a bad trend with wakeboarding too, and I think people should should cherish their stuff a little bit more and and try to try to make something with a little bit more creativity and thought and execution behind it, you know, and yeah, do something, do something a little bit more special, you know. Best trend. Best thing you're seeing? The best trend. Yeah, what gets you hyped? What gets you stoked about wakeboarding? Pedro. Caldas. Kids got it. On our on the wave of like the tricks that I'm so hyped on right now. And he's on that wave too. Shaved his head. And too, I, so he's and I love fast. that. Like I Yeah, I fuck with Pedro. Yeah. I really do. Nice guy too, man. Yeah, you know, and I like gave him a pair of Space Mob shorts like at West Rock when we did that tour, and he like rocks them in a lot of his edits and stuff, and I'm just like, damn, like, I don't know him as well as I feel like I should, and I do know him pretty well, like, but I really fuck with Pedro, dude. His riding's insane. I think it is like the most beautiful combination of power and style that wakeboarding has ever seen. Yeah. And I'd like to see more of it. All right. That's pretty good. I like that. That's good. Well, uh, actually, I think we can, we'll end the, the normal pod there and we got a bunch of Patreon questions we got to dive into after, obviously. So that's it. I mean, s- damn. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> for sure, right? I mean, obviously, we're going to get Wes back in at some point for a That was crazy. Shop talk yeah, I like to do shop talk. Yeah, we'll cut it up. We'll have more call people. in, too. You know, we'll, we'll have Wes. That was crazy, sure. dude. Let me, hold on. Let me check real quick. Let me check mine. Did, yeah, did Quinn get back to you at all? Nah, he didn't. Well, he's probably asleep. It's pretty pretty late now, but. Mm. I, I will I will say this. All right, so we need more sliding materials in wake parks. Like we need to incorporate more steel and more concrete and more marble and more this and more that and everything into wake parks because I think it'll help legitimize our sport to other sports. I think it'll keep people in it longer too. Yeah, and we're not just we're not just these pussies sliding around on plastic, and it'll it'll help like bring like 
bring the respect from other sports easier. Yeah, that's a twofold thing. I I, I believe that, and I, and like I, concrete slides, great. Like Blackwater Junction, Tricenef, like it's insane how good it slides and not abrasive to your board. Like, bro, you I mean, you know what a garage floor feels like, right? Yeah, that's how you can make the rail, and then you lube it up, and it's so good. Feeling. Which it feels good. Yeah, it's insane, dude. It's insane how good it feels. So. Love it. That's my last thing I got to say. Well, I mean, uh, you know, anybody you want to thank? Shout out. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is when I should have done the list. You know what I mean? What list? The, like the outro list of like people I got to thank. Because once you get in the thanks and then you forget somebody, then you get that late text. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think when I did <laughs> JB, he's like, I just want to thank my mom and dad. And that was it. Yeah. And he was, he was just like. Right there Man, but we'll just, we'll just go off the dome for a minute, and then yeah. if I if I forget you, like I love everyone that's helped me along. It's the not way expected. I don't everything. think that everyone's gonna be remembered. I wouldn't expect. But that. like family and everything, and the support. I'll say like my brother Spencer and his support. Um, Quinn and Luke at Valdosta, insane support. Quinn for his vision of wakeboarding. And I'm like gonna cry. Um, and and like how good his vision was from the very beginning, and like no one really had faith in him, and he and he plugged along and built this park, and it and it's phenomenal. I'm so glad to call you my best friend, and let's keep doing it. And then, <clears throat> shit, bro, it's tough, dude. I'm an emotional little dude, bro. Like. Cause I love this shit, you know what I mean? Like I really love wakeboarding, and but yeah, all the sponsors and everything. Jeff McKee at, at Slingshot, like bless you, baby. Like I love you and thank you for all the support and over the years. And I hope to keep keep pushing this envelope and everything with Slingshot. And, and shout out to other boys, Quint Noble at STZ, always being a real one. Biwig, Derek Davis, Protec, RP Best. Um, who else? Getting in with Ride Engine now. We'll see what that. Ain't even gonna ain't even gonna say much, but we cooking. So shout out them. Shout out you for for real doing this podcast, and I think it's great for the sport, and I, I think it's gonna continue to grow as long as y'all continue to help it grow. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. All that. And yeah, love it. Yeah, I think that's it, dude. Like, there's so many others, but it's like, but then you're just getting so tedious. Like, I mean, shout out all the Chuck Town homies, dude. You know who you are. Like, shout out all my friends that helped me along the way. Shout out to people who sold me camera gear. Shout out to people that have been in my edits. Shout out the the artists that made the music to go to the edits. Shout out people that create. Let's keep creating. Something like that. Shout out Cena for being the most beautiful wife that I could ever ask for. Damn, see, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it gets so, di you get so tunnel vision when you start doing this. Like, the, Well, you go down one track. And it, yeah, like, and then yeah. you're just like, at the end, you're like, I don't know. I guess that's it for that. Reverse and go uh, to yeah, that exactly. Yeah. It's so hard, but obviously, like, oh my God, Billy. Like, that, see, you want me to cry. That, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, shout out, Billy, for being the most incredible mother on the planet, and not only that, but an insane shredder and creator. And it's it's been insane to be with you and see what you what you have done already and what you will do in the future. And hype to listen to your podcast tomorrow. Heck yeah! What's up? Love it. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, join that Patreon if you want to support the podcast. It means a lot to me. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks for coming on. See you guys next time. Thank you. Move.